Like it's sad. It's Friday night. We should be going to do something fun. You, you can't do nothing fun Friday night, bro. It's still um the the covert thing, you know. She's thinking that we can watch a movie. Trust me, she. Well, that's why we're doing it early, so it's be a good time. Yeah, hopefully we'll see. Okay, we are live. We are on Sonnet Studios, and um. Right, peace and black power family. You already know what it is. You see who we got on the screen, our brother G Khan in the building, G Consciousness. Some of y'all know him by LeBron. Um, and of course, we got brother Jabari, and we're gonna have a powerful, respectful build at night to bring y'all some powerful information. Uh, as you can see, what the topic is African spirituality or Christianity, which one is best for black people? And wherever the conversation goes, we're gonna take it there. So, Brother G. Khan, let me introduce you formally to our brother, Brother Jabari. Brother Jabari, let me introduce you to our brother G. Khan in the building. Y'all can start the conversation wherever you want to go until I come in with some questions for y'all. All right, uh, great, grace and peace to the family out there. As uh, Sadat said, it's your boy G. Consciousness in the building. What up, Jabari, man? You know, uh, I'm glad to be here tonight having this conversation with you. Hopefully uh, the audience will be edified. Uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate Sanetta for bringing me on. All praise to the Most High God, and uh, I appreciate you uh, just as well as Sanetta. All right, um, Brother Jabari. I just have to say peace, brother, and, and I also need to say peace um, to the Black News 102 Sanetta TV Studios family. You have heard me say that I really am honored to continue to speak to this forum. Uh, I, I truly believe that this is a, a forum for folks who are really trying to understand some deeper issues than the stuff that you're going to catch on TV most days. Uh, and I, I really do believe that when our community has important dialogues, important conversations, we'll be able to move uh, forward in peace and power. Now, let me say to you very um, clearly that I really want us to have a really uh, peaceful uh a, a discourse and dialogue. I've only heard good things about you. While I'm not as familiar with you, Brother G Khan, I've, I've, I've only heard good things about you. And the funny thing, brother, I think I was saying to you this before we went live, sometimes when we have a peaceful dialogue, when Jabari has a peaceful dialogue with Christians, they're like, why are you doing that? Why? Just go for the juggler. And I have to always remind people that that brother sitting there is not my enemy. He's part of my family. There is no need for either of us to try to kill each other. We have to figure out how to work with each other. And so um, I, I am pleased to be able to speak with a brother who is also attempting to have a, 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 a reasoned dialogue around some issues that perhaps we can try to have um, a, an important understanding of. Definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, let me say this, uh, Jabari, um, please do not force me to get the clock. I know you are Brother Longwin, and um, oh, we want to give opportunity for each brother to have the uh, equal time. So, um, G. Khan, if you have any questions that you've seen the teachers of Brother Jabari Osazi in the past, this is your chance to ask him any question that may be on your mind, or maybe you may be confused about certain things. This is a great opportunity right now to ask the brother, any question that's on your mind, brother? Any question you would like to ask him? All right, so cool. Um, in the past, uh, were you a Christian? I was raised Christian. Okay. I was what raised made, Christian. What made, uh, you start, what made you start subscribing to uh, Kemet? 
I, it, it was in some ways a gradual process. I was raised Christian. The majority of my family is still Christian. Um, and I've always been interested in history. It started with history. And, and as I began to read the history of Christianity as an institution, I became very concerned. There were some things that obviously I, would ne I was never taught as someone who attended uh, Christian schools, and particularly Roman Catholic schools. And so I began to get really concerned. And I, I also at the same time was beginning to study extensively ancient African history. And I got to the point where I realized that my goal was not to not be a Christian. I began to realize that with what I had understood about our history, I was no longer a Christian. And I'm gonna tell you that moment when that happened was scary. <laughs> it was scary. So um, it, it was a gradual process. And, and I would say that that happened in about, it, it happened in 1990 is when it happened. It happened in 1990. So, so far as uh, when you went and you were studying Kemet, did you go as far to study the politics that was in Kemet from, I wanna say, um, fourth millennium periods so up until new middle kingdom did you did you study the politics that was going sure. on or um as a historian and and my degree is not my undergraduate degree is in africana studies which is a history based um uh discipline i actually am a historian primarily and so i have studied the history of ancient africa the history of ancient kemet the history of of kush and um, in doing that, I, I, I think everyone should understand that there's, in some instances, human beings are, are, are uh, not perfect in any tradition. And so clearly I, I am not here as a Kemetic priest because I'm saying that everyone that I have read about in ancient Kemet was perfect. I mean, that would be a, a bar that no one, no tradition, no spiritual tradition would be able to surmount. And so. Yes, I am. And, and you should know, I also teach a college level course on ancient Kemet and, and ancient Nubia, so. All right, so uh, far as like languages, uh, languages in, in Kemet up and down the Nile, um, was there confusion? Was there problems? Um, did everybody get along or what was it like, you know, in going up and down that Nile? I don't know if you can, point to any nation in history that has not had disagreements with other nations and groups of people. I, let me not even say I don't know. I know that you cannot point to any nation in history um, that has not had disagreements with other groups of people. That's just the nature of once again being human. Um, and so if that's the standard we're looking for, then we'll have issues. And, and the other thing I should say is this. Sometimes when I speak to people who are um, talking to me about Christianity, and even sometimes with the Hebrew Israelite tradition, what they do is they contrast spiritual documents with history in an interesting way, so that they will try to find someone in ancient Africa that might have done something that I would not agree with and say, this means that the tradition um, should not exist, and, and then look at a, a mythological document. You can't, con you can't compare history with, with myth in that sense. Because I'm sure that if we look at any group of people at any group of, at any period of time, we're going to see that people are not perfect. Um, and so we'll find challenging things that occurred in any spiritual tradition. As a historian of ancient Africa, I know, I sometimes know some of the challenges more than most people who are trying to challenge me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. I'm like, well, why didn't they mention this if that's the argument they wanted to make? But I, I don't think that we should expect that we have to say, that Africans were perfect and that by extension, Europeans were evil. That is an overly simplistic analysis. We should be looking at African societies because we are African, that's the reason why. And so when we look at our traditions and our history, what we should be doing from there is trying our best to um, be sure that we are following the best of what our ancestors had to offer. And so that is that is what I would do. Right, and, and the reason why I'm getting at that because um, it, it when you look at Kemet, when you look at other civilizations, civilizations, what you see is, is that in Kemet, you see 
I want to say two houses up in Lower Egypt, but you see to where what they do to establish these kingdoms through the gnomes of the Nile Valley and the bloodshed that's behind it. And that mechanism is something that I would like to point out because in Africa, the continent, there is different, there's, there's, this is the most diverse place that there is. And because it is the most diverse place that it is, that, there, that it is, that we can definitely conclude that there was problems. We see um, when you look at different, um, different, you know, artifacts that show that there was conflict. What it, what took place to uh, get things under control within the upper and the lower Egypt, and also the politics that went throughout the Nile, and so. Why I subscribe to the biblical text because the biblical text talk about what we call the beast system, and uh, Kemet is actually listed there. And um, one of the artifacts that I actually bring out that I talk about a lot is the master of animals motif. Are you familiar with that? I am. And so the Bible actually mentions that, and so we see that this 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 very. Uh, this motif is something that is not just in Africa, but is in Asia and also is in Europe just as well. And so I think that that's something to where I looked at the Bible and I subscribed to it in a way because it brought that out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some of those things are the shared things that we see of the biblical text and also artifacts that we see that are in Kemet. You know, um, when we see horse, just our Heru, you know, um, where he's gripping the, the necks of snakes and certain artifacts. And, you know, uh, we talk about the, you know, different things of that, the, uh, you know, uh, normal palette, you know, all of these different things. And so what, what is your, like, what is your take on that? Do you kind of see that there's some type of government system that is ruled by mastering nature or mastering men in a way to where they can civilize and structure themselves and, you know, uh, kind of be, you know, we, 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 I will be set as the lowest or whatever, but you know. Well, I, yeah. let me say to you that the concept of the master of animal motif is this, this idea that, especially in early civilizations, we see these images of humans uh, sort of coming out of the rest of the animal world and having dominance over animals. I don't uh, uh, subscribe to that idea at all particularly when you look at African traditions, we utilize animals as actual archetypes for, um, for sacredness in the world. You mentioned Ho uh, Horus, as you said, which is a Greek name, Heru. You mentioned Heru. Heru is often depicted as a human being with a falcon head. So that if he is the master of an animal, then the animal that he's mastering is humanity. Um, and so I don't subscribe to the concept that there's a master of animal molds. I think that that's a, fl a flawed concept. And I also want to say that I think what I might be hearing you say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because we'll have a greater dialogue and I'll come to better understanding of what of the argument you're making. What I think uh, I'm hearing you say is something that I've heard other people say. They really idolized Kemet. They actually in many ways, um, idolized Africa. And then when they began to study more about Africa and they, uh, they learned more about the challenges that humans have, the challenges that nations had, now all of a sudden they were disenchanted because the way that they approached Africa was like Africa had to be absolutely perfect. And that, first of all, let me say to you, that is not a standard that anyone should use for any civilization. Because clearly, if you're going to follow the biblical tradition, you're going to see conflict. You're going to see um, even, even mythologically, and I'm going to say this is mythologically because I do not believe it's a historical story. Even mythologically, we see um, the, the chief deity of the biblical narrative really wholesale slaughtering men, women, and children. So if it is conflict that has turned you from ancient African traditions, then I would say that you're gonna see conflict in the biblical narrative in a way that it is embraced that in a way that, that disturbs me. And so that's one of the things that I would have to say. Um, and then finally, 
let me let me really say to you that I want to hear more about the disagreements that you're referring to um, in in the ancient comedic story because I think that it would be helpful to understand exactly what um, perhaps soured you on studying ancient Africans or maybe made you uncomfortable with the conflicts they had. Right. Um, so I think that for the most part, what we'll see in the African narrative is we will see the, for the most part, we will see the, uh, a value on human life that we don't see in other early nations. We're going to see equality amongst um, men and women that we don't see under um, most modern nations. We're going to see the manner in which a morality, a moral and ethical guide actually created a nation. And we're gonna see those things. Now, once again, Africa is not perfect. Kemet is not perfect. But I, I think that if, you're, if you think that conflict would make you uncomfortable, then you're gonna see less conflict in the African narrative, but you're gonna see conflict in all narratives. Okay, right. let, me, um, let, me, let me butt in real quick. Um, this is for you, my brother G Consciousness. Through your research, through your studies, through your, um, what you have been taught about Kemet. Question for you, G Consciousness. Is Kemet a theology or science or maybe even both, according to your understanding? It's a theology and a science. It's cohesive. Okay. You care, care to elaborate a little bit why you say yeah, that? So, so what we have is, is a, a neo commissions or Kemet guys that go around, they try to disconnect the science from the religious or theology Kemet. And so when you deal with material, you deal with the science of it, but you also, man exists as also spirit, a spiritual essence. And so he carries the essence of the king or, 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 I mean, there's the essence of the king, there's the essence of people. Then you have the, the, the different aspects of Kemet far as the, the Ka, the Ba, and these different areas that you see that transcend in, in what we call the afterlife or the Amduat, the underworld. And so when you look at those things, that is a, that's material and that's also spiritual. So I believe that it's science in the material and it's expressed, first of all, it's, it's expressed spiritually because as a person thinks or his heart, then he materialize it within the scientific world. So it's both actually. And so what we get away from is when we separate those two things and you become like the latter Kemet to where Kemet evolves to a state to where they're more so material and the spiritual essence that was given unto them, they have moved away from that to the point to where the material, they, they, they've been corrupted in a sense. And this is the way we see in the Bible for us uh, nations are being corrupt uh, from, from Israel up until we see nations till today. So I believe that they, it was spiritual and it's also, it's, it's science and it's also theology and it's cohesive and it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be separated. Do you agree with that, Jabari? Um, parts of it I do. Uh, first of all, I hope I'm not being flippant. You said is Kemet a science or a spiritual system? Kemet is a nation. Is it, is, I said, is Kemet a theology? Yes, a theology or a science. Right. Kemet is a nation. Or both, or both. It's a, Kemet is a nation. You're talking about the spirit. Are you, you, I think what you're, you probably mean to ask is, did the Kemetic people practice science or theology? And okay. I want to say that in the ancient African cosmogony, the ancient African philosophy, they did not make large distinction between spirituality and science. In fact, they coexisted seamlessly. The first scientists in the world are scientists in Africa, and the first scientists in Africa are usually spiritual leaders, they're priests. Did, did the Kemetic people believe in a deity outside of themselves, or did they believe that they was the true and living God on the planet? Or did would, they believe in a God outside of the body? Like I would Christians, say, like Muslims, like Hebrews? I would say both. Okay. I would say the best way to look at it is the Kemetic people believed that they were vessels of divinity. In fact, sometimes people oversimplify it a bit and say that the Kemetic people say that we are gods. That's a little bit of an oversimplification, but it's still not entirely untrue. It can be helpful to help people understand the difference in the Kemetic uh, ideology versus some of the modern Abrahamic traditions that we see. In the okay. Kemetic narrative, 
we are divine beings trying to cultivate our divine energy and power. And that we have all the powers of divinity. In fact, also all of the responsibilities of divinity. But in total, all we all are divinity. So the divine force is both indwelling and outdwelling. Okay, and so I, um, uh, G Khan, through your research and study, my brother, um, you study Kemet. Of course, you study the Bible, you are into the Bible. Which one works best for our people? Studying Kemet or studying the Bible? Which one you think is more better for our people? Another, before you shift to another question, can I just tease one more thing? Go ahead, brother. I know Brother G Khan mentioned that Kemet became uh, corrupt in its later years, and I want him to justify that comment. Um, like I said, all human beings are not perfect, right? And so uh, I, I, I would like to know why he made that, that case. I don't, I'm not sure where that comes from. Right, and, and actually, let me, let me correct that. I wouldn't even say in his later years, when you look at, Kemet is what you will see of governments today. People evolve, people need things. They need sources, they need resources. You have hunter-gatherers before you even get to Kemet. Then you got them civilizing. You got agriculture coming into play. People need things. Africa, things dry out. The climates, environments die out. People don't communicate well enough to the point to where they don't come together. So when you look at Africa, in order to uh, establish the, the, the nation, there had to be bloodshed first. And so, for instance, if we, if we, pick, up, if we pick up the normal palate, what do we see there to establish upper and, and lower Egypt? We see bloodshed. And so we will have to say, well, hold on. Before Kemet came from the south, who was in the north? Because if we believe that people came from sub-Saharan Africa and they traveled out, then those people in the north would have went and established, this, established some things, established their science, because science is, is, is something that is not a, a, a colored thing. People venture out into the world and they create and they overcome and, and, and they want to know things. And so they deal with science. And so when you look at uh, the northern parts of Kemet, you would have had people already up there. You would have had people to the south, but to go north and to establish a civilization, there has to be civil war first because everybody's not going to agree with your ideals. And that's a fact. And like we know this because this is the most diverse place that there is in the world. Now, the problem I have with Kemet, so we can create a, 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 a we can sever some things, is that the government system that was established by, by, by the way of bread to control people. In other words, what I mean by that is this is is that when you look at the normal palette, you see that there is connections between different worlds, but these connections is with trade. And just know I'm a truck driver, so I understand trade. I understand when people have contact with each other, when materials and minerals is needed. Um, different, they, they guarded their, basically their areas. You understand the, the rowdy routes with water covered areas that they guarded those areas because they needed those things, those supplies. And not just them, but everybody needed those things. And so people run out of things. And so when they run out of things, that's when we have conflict. So my thing is, my, my thing that I have with is the system that was built that we can also see today that is a system that has uh, conquered the lower people to the point to where it more so didn't benefit them and more so damaged them. And it's been, the cycle is being continued. Even even among uh, other other uh, empires or other nations, I I I believe that you have to justify your arguments by giving us either a time frame or a, a ruler or because I I first of all I, I I'm hearing you say that man comes into dominance over nature. I've also heard you saying that when you run out of of resources, then you come into conflict. And I want to say that perhaps the most important comedic narrative that is continually overlooked is the idea that the comedic people sought to live in tune with the order of the universe, something that is often called Ma'at. In fact, you know that Kemet exists in a desert. Most people would not want to live in the desert. There are very few resources there. 
And so then you might say, well, okay, at least you're able to find a water source and perhaps a food source along this wonderful river that today is misnomer the Nile that our ancestors, our African ancestors called the Hapi. And that could, that could suffice, but then that river overflows its boundaries and could be absolutely catastrophic and destroy everything, kill people. So I think a lesser human would have moved from that place and seen conflict. Instead, Kemet actually sought to, to live in tune. To master it, actually. That's not mastering, that's living in tune. That's living in tune. If you think you're gonna live in, you're gonna master the desert, you will be a dry bone in the desert. <laughs> and so what they did was they were able to understand the movements of the heavens, the movements of stars, which are distant suns, in order to understand when the river would overflow so that instead of seeing this overflowing river that could be catastrophic in the middle of a desert as a calamity, they saw it as an opportunity. We don't see Kemet mastering nature. We see Kemet living in tune with nature. And I also want to say that when you say that there is bloodshed that occurs, and we see that on the Namur palette, two things that I, I think you have to acknowledge. There are many historians that believe that Namur might have been fighting foreign people who took place on the top, uh, on the coast of Africa. I think there needs to be more research to determine whether that is the case. But there are many historians that believe that he was fighting Asiatics who he did not believe should be there. And so that could have been a source of conflict. But I also want us to understand that all peoples have conflict. If, if, the, if the, the war on the, on the Namur palette is what gives you distaste, then how do you explain Sodom and Gomorrah? How do you explain the wholesale destruction in the biblical narrative of men, women, and children? At least Namur's fighting soldiers. In the biblical narrative, we see the biblical God kill whole peoples. So if it is conflict and bloodshed that turns you from Kemet, then you should have turned from the Bible 67 times before you turn from Kemet once. Right. So so I, I, one of the things, like you said, that what you see on the, on the pallet is uh, soldiers. Now, we already know, like, there is no, in the art of war, there is no nation today that goes in and say, I'm just going to beat up on these people or the soldiers, right? Especially in the ancient times and not, and not overtake those people or oppress those people because that takes place. Like, like for instance, you have six, okay, in, 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 in the Nile Valley, in the gnomes, you have six creation stories, right? Possibly they're more than six. Possibly yeah, they're more than six. six. Now, these are people that have the contentions of Horus and Seth are contentions of different philosophies of two different people. Yes and no. That? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Okay, so these are groups of people, and these contentions that they have are contentions to belittle another people through that which is sodomy or what we call homosexuality which is weird to me because i i wouldn't i don't understand why would they want to do that brother you are you, i continue to hear that you were referring to one line in one document when kemet has millions of documents one line in one document when kemet has millions of documents and that document was not a spiritual narrative as much as it was a, descri a description that one king described. And we actually see in the ancient world, and there, there could be a whole paper on this, that's not gonna be my course of study, but there is in the ancient world, a time when we see when uh, uh, battles occur, that sometimes you would see the winning of a ruler disrespect the losing ruler. It, it's not just something we see in Kemet, we see it in lots of different places. Right. And you, and you still are talking about one line on one text. Well, I got, I, 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 it's, there's many a text, like there's many of artifacts, for instance, when we talk about the Gabel El Arak knife. Are you familiar with that knife? I am. I, brother, right. 
you go in far field, there's a lot of stuff you got to fill in because you're making a lot of claims that you haven't filled in. Before you go there, you got to tell me about why you think that um, comedic civilizations are the same as modern civilizations and are about conquest. That's not what we see in ancient Kemet. The That's not what we see in ancient Kemet. You say that the, the powerful people are just dominating the poor people. You make a you have to make the argument for that. You can't just say it. What right. what makes you say that that's the case? Right. And so, then and then you're contrasting that with the biblical narrative, a biblical narrative that justifies slavery. So right. I don't understand how you could do that. I'm I'm confused. Right. And so the 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 when you look at the biblical narrative, right? It actually tells you why there is servitude, why there is servants. It tells you why these things come into play because we see in, in like early in Genesis, it says that there is a disconnect between the creator, right? And a disconnect between man. So the manner that he needs on how to till the land are instructions because he's just a steward. He's a minister of that, which is the earth. So, but he needs the, the manual on to understand the earth. And so that even that's even with Kemet because Kemet, they came to the point to where through trial and through error, just as well as them to understand certain things about the land and how to, uh, um, how to uh, like, you, like you say, to control the Nile or to uh, flow with the Nile. And, and to, live in, to live in harmony with it. To live in harmony. And, and, right. and even with that, they knew already that there, like, for instance, when you talk about that, there was, there was catastrophic things that take place to where you can only so long be in harmony with this because it's it has a randomness to it to where one day something can happen. And then you have to, once again, figure that out. Because we see that, uh, with, like you say, dealing with the now, several times dealing with the now, the now was something they had to make canals, offshoots, different things to control uh, the flow of the now. And even with that, sometimes there, uh, the now was 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 um, flooding out crops and doing all types of stuff. Sometimes it didn't act like they wanted it to act, but they had to build a system, a mechanism to work for them. So I, I see that even with that is you protect that with you those areas that you mastered or those areas that you live in harmony with. And whoever coming to those areas, you got to deal with them because they need a source of water like you need a source of water. You got a continent that we see of people that speak many of languages. And when you look at the master of animals motif, that's the reason why I brought it out because the Bible tells you man should not live by bread alone, but by every word to proceed about the mouth of God. Well, when you look at Kemet, Kemet is evolving in weaponry. Kemet is evolving or using a system that is based upon bread, right? And with that bread, they're using that bread or that master of animals to control that we see. Because if a person can hunt, definitely if they can bring food like, your, like our government today, you're going to uh, uh, come up under that B system because you want to live. You got to eat. And so who told you that you was higher than the next person? Was it because technocracy, because you had technology or science that was higher than the other Africans that was there? And see, technocracy is something we got to look at today because that's the same type of system that we see in Kemet. Whoever evolved their weaponry to the point to where they can dominate the other people, that's what happened. They controlled them. And Justify so, that. Okay, wait, you're making a lot of statements. Why, let's try something different. That statement you just made, justify it. Give me it's, the historical record that justifies what you just said. It's right there in the normal pilot. For instance, when, when the normal stretches out his hand, what is in normal's hand? A mace head. And what is he what is he doing with that mace head? He's going to defeat the ruler of the other people, of the other group of people. And so what he did was he evolved uh, material to defeat or get the mastermind over the next person. Did he or did he not? You got to make that argument. Brother, listen, it seems to me like you are saying that because we see conflict, we should be disturbed by the comedic narrative. I, first of all, you should understand that Kemet lasts 3,000 years. 
And for the most part, we don't see wholesale slaughter of people. That's something you'll definitely see in the biblical narrative. Whole nations destroyed men, women, children, animals. Why? Because they was evil. You don't see that in the comedic narrative. Yes, you, you do. just don't see what you got to, you do not. The historian is saying to you, you do not see that in the comedic narrative. Uh, Jikon, I think that you're going to be outmatched here because I really do believe that you have taken some general themes and you fit them, you've overlaid them on the comedic narrative without studying it very well. Because I, I, I don't see how you could make the argument that Narmer uh, evolved technology and that's why he went to dominate people on the north. Oh, you gotta evolve your technology. If you don't evolve your technology, you don't advance. And so the reason why Narmer had a battle with people on the north is because he evolved technology? You got to. If, Justify listen, that no, statement. No, no, this is what Justify I'm saying. Justify the statement. Hold on, this Where is what I'm saying. Where do you see him evolving technology and, 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 and um, dominating people in the north? Listen, you have to evolve within your science in order to overcome. And so even when you look at the Amara squad, one of the things that Uncle Cat says is, we need to learn science. Because if you learn science, then you can have your doctors, then you can have your engineers. And so that's important because now when you start even looking at the, the concept of evolution or, or the thought, when you start looking at the, uh, the descent of man, when you look at Norm, uh, Darwin's book, he talks about he first he, he starts off talking about man in his other book. Then he starts off talking about basically, uh, man. Uh, I mean not man, uh, organisms. But we are li living organisms. But he plays it off. But then when you get to the descent of man, then we start talking about men having the mindset basically to overcome each other. So you got to have the mindset. You got to have science in order to overcome the next nation. Whoever science is better than. What, what I'm asking you to do, you are making an assertion about an ancient African nation. And now you're telling me that the source you're making that assertion about is the writings of Charles Darwin, an 18th century- I'm using it for an example. European, but I, but I don't want you to use, I want you to justify what you said about Kemet based on ancient Kemet. Okay, so I got it. made a lot of claims You've even said that the Kemetic people saw themselves as the masters of animals. I think that that is a completely incorrect analysis. Okay, you're gonna see you're gonna see many deities in ancient Kemet that are based on animals. Can I share my screen? Can I share my screen here? Please yes, go. go ahead, brother. You see my screen? Yes. I don't see it yet. What you I see, see it. it? We see okay, it. Yes, I see it now. All right, cool. So what is this to you? What do you see here to you? What is this? Let's blow this up right here. This is the palette of Narmer, uh -huh. an artifact that I actually lead tours to in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo every year. Um, I, I want you to tell me why we're looking at the palette of Narmer. Just explain to me why, what you're trying to see here. All right, so this is 3100 BC. What I see is, is the people coming in, right? Establishing themselves as to be rulers. And if you look at this, this palette, the one that I zoomed in on, they come in with their standards first. These are the standards, right? And this is the king behind them, the sandal bearer who bears the rosette, which means kingship or royalty uh, in the pot, which is the essence of the king. He has the wash pot, and then you have also a rope and bread, right? Right here. They come with their standards. And if you look at it- right hey, Excuse me, G-Kong. Can you use your mouse to go over it to show the people where you at? Like, like what you talking about? Oh that man, way, I, left, I left my witch call at the- uh, You know what I'm talking about, right? Like to put your mouse on the picture to show it where you saying? Yeah, I actually left my pen because it's a tablet at the- Oh, okay. Room. All right, well, go ahead, continue, brother. How about, wait, wait, let's do this, G-Con. I, I want to assist in what you're saying. Okay. I'm going to show the same palette and I'm going to put my mouse over what you're referring to. Gotcha, appreciate that. Okay, right. and if I'm not doing it right, tell me, okay? Because my goal is not to misrepresent what you're saying, it's to understand what you're saying. Okay. So stop, so stop um, sharing for a second. I'm going to do it. I'll okay. do it. Okay. Yeah, so the people know what area you're talking about. He's talking about that. the name of the, well, 
let me let me show let me show and then we can talk more about it. so i believe you're talking here right okay uh no to the to when the you said the bread and the roll yes and then you have the standards you see the standards the horse standards uh here. Yeah, you have the standards. I don't know what is this a placenta? This is uh, the jackal, the opener of the way, I guess. Who is this? Is Hoy, huh? Weppel Watt. Yeah, Weppel Watt. And then you have um, you if you look to the right here, you have their standards. They come in. Then you have the the uh, servants here. They tied up, and they have their heads in between their legs, right? You think those are servants? Not servants, but these are uh uh um. These are cap. I'm not captains. Uh, these are soldiers that were defeated. Use cap. your mouth, Jabari. Show the people yeah, what you're yeah, talking. Sorry, about. right here is what he's referring to, right? So, okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. So then, what do you have here? You have the whole standard. So, uh, I'm gonna. So, so it's just like Israel, or just like any other nation. When they come in, what are they gonna bring? They're gonna bring their standards. Israel came in, right? They came in with their standard. They came in with the Ark of the Covenant with their deity or their ancestor, right? Who gave them laws, government, to take over the Levant area. So then you get to Kemet, right? It's the same thing, but when you look at the system of God's uh, or the, the, the biblical system, it tells you that he's telling them in the wilderness concerning bread, do not continue to be tripping over this bread because that's gonna come, but if you're tripping over the bread and you are nagging at each other or getting upset with each other or fighting with each other, then the material world is overcoming your spiritual, the spirituality of you. And so this is what causes separation. And so when you look at this text right here, this is talking about a conqueror that rises up, that comes in, and he brings us his standard. And and, and 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 his gods, his natures that he's dealing with. This ain't all of the continent of Africa, all of the Nile Valley. This has to be established. When you look at the Nile Valley and you go up to the north before there was this, you had the Madai culture. We know that they was connected with the people that was over in Arabia because we could tell by the materials and masonry, which does not lie. And so when you look at this right here, this is an example of standards coming in Established, and this is native to the land. Even if you say it's Asiatics, if, if, if these are Afro Asiatics, these are up in the north. If even if you want to say even in uh, even in, even south, because you have to conquer the south in order to also get the, the the same type of ideals or the same type of uh, structure in order to make this civilization. The civilization is not just one people, but many of people that have united together up under the ideals of this government or either. It, bringing these these things together these different uh, cosmologies together it's right here in this horse and then when you look down i mean when you in this when you go down what do you see the they taming myth, mythical animals or it could be which which is the seropod which is a system or an animal that comes from the east so these are establishments between uh, different worlds, I mean, different uh, trade areas. And remember, I, I trade a lot because I'm a truck driver. So I know about if I want to go get rock over here, where I got to go get it from. If I need to go get a certain type of material over here, sand from Mexico and take it over to Florida, I got to go get these different things from different areas that, that, that might not be native to other lands, especially Africa. The lie is that Africa has all the sources of the world, that's a lot. Okay, so so close it up, close it up, Ron G. Let the people know exactly what you're talking about so Jabari could get it in. All right, so this very picture right here establishes a system that we see that is a the, the, the system of, of division and conquering just the same way that we see uh, Americans came in and established this land. Okay, brother Jabari, is on I, you. You can really finish breaking see- it down. Your interpretation is entirely unfounded based on what you what we're looking at, entirely unfounded. And I, I I think that what I keep hearing you do is you look at an image and then you use foreign text, later people to understand what you're seeing. I don't understand why you've done that. You looked at the Palestinian, you said it's just like Israel. 
you looked at the evolution of people. You said, this is what Charles Darwin is talking about. I want you to justify your comments about Kemet based on the history of Kemet. I'm not seeing you do that. So let me show you why I disagree with your analysis here, right? Can we do that? First yeah. of all, you, you've used this as the, do, the palette of Namur as the dominant, the master of animals. Well, here goes Namur here, right? L let me just clearly say to you that above Namur are two animal deities. Here, this is likely, uh, historians believe that this may be Bat, who is an early version of Het Heru, who the Greeks called Hath Hathor. You can see that she has cow ears and cow horns. And the deity that is giving Namur his power is a falcon here. So I'm not exactly sure why you see this as the master of animals. I think the only reason why you're seeing it that way is because you've heard it as a theme elsewhere and you're overlaying it on top of this without trying to understand what you're looking at. Well, this is normal. Right part, wait, 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 wait. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. I want to also go into the section here where you see Namur actually marching into the north, into what would later be called Upper Kemet, bringing his standards, that's correct. By the way, you should know, you said this is the rope and the bread. This is, this is the, likely the dude's name right here. This is his name. Just like this is Namur's name. We know this is Namur's name. Right. This is likely the name of the person here. And this, is li this rosette you're referring to is likely the name of these people. That's what you're seeing. What do you mean when you say likely? Well, the reason why I have to say likely is because some of these glyphs are not used in Middle Egyptian or in early Egyptian. This is probably an very, a very early form of the Kemetic language. Right, but some of it is from... lost to us. But because we can tell you that this is Namur here, then we should assume logically that these symbols in front of these people's faces also designate who they are. In well, fact, even the person that Narmer was doing battle with, we probably see the name of this person here. This right, is the so way in which the, the artifact is rendered. Let me go further before, because that's not even the major point. His name is actually up here, though. Let's go. I'm sorry? His name is up here at the top right here. Yes, here as well. Right. And no, so I'm we see on, the same glyphs, though, brother. No, so I'm this saying. is his name. Okay, so, so look. You see, you see the. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I want to go more into. You spoke okay. for a while. I want to go okay. through some more of what you said. Now, I think that you are saying that your disgust with Kemet, or let me not say disgust, maybe that's too heavy. Your problem with Kemet is that you see conflict. And I want to just remind you, as someone who has studied history for a really long time, that you're not going to find a nation on the face of the planet that has not had, con had conflict. Not conflict. If if conflict, wait, let me let me drive this home. If conflict is what disturbs you about Kem Kemet, then every nation on the planet will be disturbing disturbing to you. You have to have a, a deeper analysis of the relations between people in order to understand whether you agree that something is righteous or not. But then let's go further. You looked at these people. By the way, first you called them servants. I don't know why. Most historians would okay. argue that these are the soldiers of the people that were that he was fighting. We know that he was fighting 6,000 soldiers. The number is issued here on the pallet. That's what this is. It's telling us he fought 6,000 soldiers. These are likely the soldiers that he was doing battle with. By the way, you should know that these are all men. And in war, the reality is sometimes soldiers die. I am not justifying death. I'm just saying that every nation on the planet, planet has likely engaged in war and had battles where people die. I think that human life is valuable. I'm a priest, I'm not a, a, a military general. So I think that that's unfortunate, right? But the reality is every nation has done that. But if you wanna critique Kemet for the death of these, these 10 soldiers, then you need to justify to me 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 2 to 3. Because if this disturbs you about Kemet, you got to justify this. No, it's not that it disturbs me. Can you me. read it? No, you want not, me to read it for you. No, it's not that it disturbs me. It's the mechanism, it. as, far as, it's the mechanism as far as 
Um, I want you to read it too, Jabari. I think I'm going to read it. Yeah, it's the mechanism for, as far as living by bread alone, basically to establish what you call this. Can I ask you a question? Where does that phrase living by bread alone come from? It comes from the biblical text. I know. What I'm trying to get you to see, Brother G-Con, is that you're taking narratives from outside of Kemet, later narratives, and you're superimposing them. That's why I think you're not necessarily getting the whole picture. You are a studied brother or an articulate brother. I'm not saying that you're stupid. Anyone that's listening to you knows that you're an intelligent brother. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying you'll get into a, ch you'll get into a problem when you take the narratives, later narratives of other people and just simply superimpose them and then assume that you understand what's happening. Right. You so know let me I, read Samuel. Let me read First Samuel, okay. chapter 15, verses 2 to 3. And I know you know what I'm about to read. That's why you got a little smile on your face. Because if you have a problem with war in Kemet, you no, got to no, identify have a, this. You're missing me, though. I don't have a problem. You, you keep saying conflict. There's going to be conflict because humans have differences. But let me we, just read it, brother. Let me read it. Because you got to justify this. Right. If you've asked me to justify the conflicts in Kemet, you got to justify this. And by the way, the conflict that you're looking at in Kemet is likely a historical story. It is believed that Namr actually had a battle. Mm -hmm. The conflict that I am re referring to here in the biblical narrative is likely a mythological story. So what is the difference here? The difference is this is what people are saying is right rather than something that happened in history. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 15, two, verses two to three. Thus the Lord said, Lord of hosts, thus says the Lord of hosts, I have noted what Amalek did to Israel in opposing them on the way when they came up out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them. Kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. If conflict... And war is what has turned you away from studying ancient Africa and led you back to the, the, the biblical text. Well, brother, this is what we call the pot calling the kettle black. You missing me. You misinterpreting what I'm saying. I want you to explain more. I keep telling you that there's going to be conflict, right? Yeah. Now, when you say that I'm taking stories and related to today, as if you don't see the same problem exists today. You can't do you, that, Brother you, G. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to tell you why I can do it. I'm going to tell you why. It's a fact. It's a fact that the problems that Kenneth was facing back then with different people to go up the norms, because you would agree that Kenneth came from the South, right? The, yes. The, right. So when they go to the North, what are they going to run into? Conflict, right? What happened when they went to the North? But brother, as I have said, you are going in every nation in the world, you will see conflict. Right, and so so here's my thing. So why now, are you bringing it up if you're saying that this is not the problem? No, 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 hold on. Now here's my thing. Now, to show, to, to, to finish what I'm saying is this is, is that eventually men get away from that which is spiritually to be the holders and dominate the evils that we see of the world and they get off more into materialism. You see what I'm saying? And so this is what the Bible establishes because if you look at it, he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word to proceed out the mouth of God. That means if, if it's all that you need is bread to lie on your brother, which happened back then, because that's how Kemet was, uh, uh, fell into, fell into the, when we start talking about, uh, uh, the different people betraying people. If, if it's all you need is, is, is to say, well, I want you to lay down with me with another man and I'll give you this money to, to overcome. This is something that is from an ancient perspective to a modern. So when you get to talking from looking at this and you look at an empire conquering, conquering other nations, this is the part that you is romanticizing and don't want to talk about because it's definitely there. And so what I'm saying is this is, is that the concept of living by bread alone to establish yourself and living in the material world and denying the essence of the creator that we see is something that has destroyed many of nations and it keeps cycling it keeps cycling because everybody wants to survive everybody wants to live and they selling each other out for bread 
That mechanism is so a let mechanism. Let me ask you a question then. Let me ask you. So Go you're ahead. saying that civilizations fall because people eventually sell out and they're no longer connected to the, the powerful narrative of their spirituality. Uh, exactly. Yes? It, it, that's so let me ask you this then. So let me ask you this then. How long did Judah exist? Judah who? Judah, the, the, the nation of Judah. The how nation long of did... Israel, hey, they was on and off because they-, they How long they, did they exist? They was on and off. They, how they, long did they exist? I, I They're not say, on and off, there's an answer. I, I, I wanna say, no, the reason I'm saying it, okay, let's say for instance, they came about in 1400 BC according to the conventional chronology, okay? Let's say they, say they came- Which about. I would disagree with, but I'll, I'll let you do about. that for a moment. Let's say they came about, right? And they existed all the way until today, right? They existed to today. <laughs> right. Okay, because Bro, what? I'm gonna tell you why they I say existed that. from then to today. Right, I'm gonna tell you what what I'm saying. As far as like, there are Judah is basically just a kingdom. No, a, brother, I'm asking you about the nation of Judah. How okay. long did it exist? You, uh, what I mean, what what thousands of years? Uh, uh probably. I mean, they 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 existed today. What do you brother. mean, brother? Brother, that is a ridiculous statement. Look at this. As, as a kingdom, you talking about as you know a what, brother. Can I say this first of all? Right, I'm right. enjoying this conversation first right. of all. But let me say, you know that that's a ridiculous statement. Look at this smile. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. The barbershop talking mess right now. Are you saying as a kingdom? No are as you a saying, kingdom, I asked you about a nation. Bro, that's you heard what, what I said, brother. As a kingdom, Israel probably had at least around about five or six hundred years, they were so rebellious. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So if your argument, your thesis, is that nations fall because people move away from their spiritual traditions, and you are saying that Israel had about five, six hundred years, by the way, I'm going to disagree with that date, but I'm going to give it to you for a second. Then when you say that Kemen lasted 3,000 years, how do you explain that then? Well, hold on. When you say, hold on, it's a simple question. Well, hold on. When you say Kemet lasted 3,000 years, you got to hold right there because I'm going to tell you why. Why? Because Kemet was a civilization. So those are and groups. And so was Judah. And so was Israel. Hold on. So those are groups of people. Israel was a nation of people that consisted of Israelites and whoever enjoined to Israel. But a civilization like Kemet, it was Africa. Africa is the, the most most uh, um, brother, diverse person, place that there is. That's the true. World. But brother, I'm talking, I'm comparing nation to nation. It I didn't ask you about, wait, 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 wait. I'm not asking you about the whole continent of Africa. I'm talking to you about the two lands. I'm right. talking to you about Kemet. You said, wait a minute. You said that Namar creates Kemet in what year? No, I didn't say he created Kemet. You, he, yes, you, brother. Uh, I say he joined them to the, the joining together or the continue to join. Now, them. wait a minute. Don't go down that road because then you're going to give us more than 3,000 years. Right. No, no. Let's just on, say, on. let's just say that Kemet began when Namur unifies those two lands. Right. But it wasn't just always a, uh, uh, it was always an admixture of people. It's not like this is a consecutive 3,000 years. No, you got. Uh, the Assyrians running up in there. You got the Hyksus running up in there. Brother, you know, you got wait, the wait, 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 wait. Kemet has a fall. There are several times that Kemet is weak, but Kemet falls. Most people would argue that Kemet falls. Some people would say it argued it fell in 32 BCE. Some people would argue that it fell in 332 BCE. I'm referencing when the Greeks came and Kemet was no longer its own nation. And when the Romans came in 32 BCE when Kemet was no longer its own nation. Most historians, African-centered or European would give those dates. In fact, you cited the dates earlier, dear brother. Yeah, you yeah. cited the dates. So what I'm saying to you is if your theses, the theses that is whipping you right now, because I don't think you see what you said, the theses that you are arguing, I lo I'm loving this. The theses that you are arguing is one where you are saying that nations fall because people move away from their spiritual traditions. And I am willing to give you five to 600 years for Israel. I'm willing to give that to you, even though I think we could contest and say it was much shorter. Right. So I'm so willing to give that to you. So that if you believe that 
that nations fall because people move away from this. That's Porter. That's Porter. Then wait a minute. Then Kemet lasted longer than any nation in human civilization. Right, but Kemet is not one family, though. You Neither is Israel. Neither but is Israel, Judah. Israel is a one family. In other words, when they come out of uh, uh, when they come out of Egypt, that never happened. By the way, you wait, should know that on, never hold happened. Hold on, hold on. Now, here, now, here, now, here's the problem with this, right? Now, you can is is that a fact that that never happened? What I can say to you is this: we have no archaeological evidence for the um, for the Israelites leaving Kemet ending their enslavement. So it's not a fact. I All I can say to you is this, brother. I'm a historian, right? I wasn't there. You weren't there. I have to go by the text and the artifacts. And you should know that for literally probably the last 600 years, people have been looking for the artifacts and they have not found them. I'm asking, is it a fact though? Is that a fact? You're you're oversimplifying this. I'm no, gonna no. go with you and oversimplify it. Let's answer the question. Is, yes or no. I'm gonna I'm gonna oversimplify it with you. It is a fact that Israel was not enslaved in Kemet and did not have an exodus. Right. And so and so the problem with that is is this is is that with archaeology that comes for digging tales or digging with time, right? And so it, it is, while it is that we have not found no evidence supposedly, right? Wait, wait, say that again? No evidence supposedly. Okay, good. And now the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is, let me ask you a question. Yes. What shovel did you got and what, what, what did you dig at? What are you saying? What shovel did you dig with and what tool was you over there with? To, to oh, brother, what you believe brother I have been supporting archaeological efforts in Kemet for at least the last 15 years. <laughs> now you know I have been assisting, said? I have been assisting with archaeological. Don't that's not the standard. You don't want to die on that hill. You don't no, want to die know on that hill. Because if you want to know what I do, call brother Anthony Browder and talk okay, to him about so Anika and Jabari Osaze. Let me ask you a question. Give me a person right now that has a permit to dig. I just gave you one. Who is it? Anthony Browder. Okay, let's look up Anthony Browder. How old is Anthony Browder? Oh English? my goodness. And is, is he white or is he, what is he? You don't even know who Anthony Browder is? I don't know who he is, that's what oh, I'm asking. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, you know what the problem here is? You have been looking at later narratives and superimposing them and saying that you have an understanding of Kemet. That's not what happened, that, that, brother, you can't do that. And, and while you're looking at Anthony Browder, let me show you something. Well, hold on. Before you do that, I want to mention this right here. Go ahead. Is it Anthony T. Browder? Yes. Okay. Is a top 100 AALBC.com best-selling author. Or list 10 times. Anthony T. Browder is an author, publisher, cultural historian, artist, and an educational consultant. So is he an archaeologist? Where's where's his? Where? Okay, I don't know why you're doing that because the audience knows what he did, but I'll explain. Anthony Browder is uh, the chief partner of an archaeological site. He actually hires archaeologists and anthropologists and linguists. In fact, in the last archaeological year, they hired, in fact, with some hefty dollars from Anika and Jabari Osaze. I can say that publicly. They hired over 300 people. So Anthony Browder is in charge of the archaeological site. He hires people to do the work. I have been to the site at least 11 or 12 times. And so if you, if you want to see the video of me lifting a shovel and digging, I, I have the video. If you want to see the video of me taking groups there, I have that video. If you want to do some more research on what is called the ASA Research Project, you're gonna see what I'm referring to. All right, so question. What areas and have they have they even excavated uh half of uh of northern Africa or either northeast Africa? Have they excavated half of northeast Africa? Brother, you cannot make an argument based on the absence of evidence. Okay, so right there. But now, what I can say to uh, you, so right there, but that's what you. you're saying. I'm saying to you that historians, archeologists, um, 
philologists, people who study languages, have actually been looking for the Exodus for hundreds of years. Let me show now, you my site. Let me now, 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 now hold on. Like the this. reason why I brought that point up is this is I brought that up is because he knows, fellas, and everybody listening in, that they have not excavated half of Northeast Africa. You know why? Because some of those Arabs won't let you get the permits over there. Brother, that. brother, stop. Hold stop, on, hold on, brother. hold on, stop. Stop. You hold know on. you're making a slippery argument. Look at the spot. Look at the spot. So, look at the so, spot. So, so with that psychology, he G -Con, you and I need say, to have dinner and have an argument, you know. I'm enjoying this argument. He cannot <laughs> say that it is a fact that there brother, is no evidence because there brother, is still But brother, if you if I can't say it's a fact that it didn't happen, how can you say it's a fact that it did? Because you hey, started by saying it happened. Let I'm me show you what, let me show you what Bible, that. let me, yes, you did. Oh, you no, said, when, said. No, you on, said when the Israelites left on, but this Egypt what I in the Exodus. Hold on, hold on. Let's get something clear. Me and you share something in common here on this panel right now. What's that? That's what that is. You just established that you are a believer like I am because if it's not a fact, Stop. and you don't know, Stop. That's Stop. All Stop. right, all right. Time out. Stop. Both of y'all time out. Time out, Jabari. Both of y'all time out for a minute. I wanted to ask some questions that I got, but I'm I'm enjoying this too, Jabari. Before you do that, I want to show the screen. I, I, I'm not- I'm going to let you show the screen. Okay. But I'm taking a break for one minute. I want to okay. say I am definitely enjoying both of you two smart, brilliant, bright brothers. And I'm loving it. I got so many questions, but um, I'm just sitting back, taking it all in and watching y'all. But I got to do this as a quick commercial, and then I'll bring it full-fledged to you, Brother Jabari. So give me a minute. Go ahead. And, um, do what you got to do, brother. I get it. Right. Let me just do this. Declared that no one in Egypt, particularly no one in the West Bank, has excavated or restored a tomb as we have. And so this is the first time in history that Egyptians are seeing black folk on this level. And I represent you. As I said, we are a nonprofit. And so it is those people who have supported the work of the Asa Restoration Project and contributed to our work that has allowed us to do the things that we've done. So I want to share this brief. Uh, clip and hopefully it will play. See that? He over there doing the work, baby. He doing the work, man. Is it me? Or do y'all also notice that these guys is always trying to tear down African scholars? And they supposed to be, old, and they older than them, but they, like, watch tomorrow, you might see somebody on Garfield Channel trying to tear this down or trying to go and encounter what he's singing. And I mean, what is all of that for? Why would you want to tear down something when we trying to build an African consciousness? That's crazy, man. I don't get it. Like, who the fuck is, what's going on? Instead of adding on the bill, don't tear down the bill. We going backwards when we begin to do that type of shit. to play too much i just wanted to add that right quick that right there answers your um lecture. that right there that right there just answers your question g con that's, 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 that's my question. hold on hold on hold on now that's um anthony browder and you can see him out there digging up brother he got europeans around him he got people around him doing the work he has the experts whoever they are he hires them yeah so he, he got, got the you. experts doing it so got that right there is just to answer now jabari what was you going to say brother i i, I want to say this and and so just to, to to clarify what's being said i think that brother g con knows that he's making a really slippery argument right there have been people searching for the um the the wilderness wanderings and the enslavement of the hebrews for literally over 600 years, and they have not found it. For over 600 years, they've been looking for this. 
I'm talking about probably spending at this point trillions of dollars looking for it. They have not found it. In fact, what they have found is the graves of people who worked on sites. We know who they were, what they did, how much they got paid. If you want to think about the Hebrews leaving Kemet, the closest thing that you're going to find is the Hyksos. And I know Brother G. Khan knows the story of the Hyksos. I'm not even going there because that would undermine him so thoroughly. Look at the smile. Look at the look at smile. <laughs> that, but, but I'm not just telling you what Brother Jabari believes. Look at what some of the biblical historians are saying. These are people that are not experts on Kemet, experts on the Bible. Look at what they have said about um, whether the exodus has occurred. Look at this. This is from Reconstructing the Society of Ancient Israel by Paula McNutt, 1999, page 41. Until the last several decades, historians of ancient Israel have tended to begin their accounts of Israel's history with the so-called ancestral or patriarchal period, dated variously to the Middle Bronze, Middle Bronze II, or the early part of the Late Bronze Age. Underlying these histories is an assumption that the traditions recorded in the book of Genesis about Abraham and his descendants, those in the remainder of the Pentateuch about Moses and the Exodus from Egypt, and those in Joshua and Judges about the conquest and settlement preserve some historical evidence of a period preceding the birth of Israel as a nation at the end of the early Iron Age. Now remember, she's saying this is an assumption. Listen to what she says now but it is now generally recognized that there is nothing specific in the Genesis stories that can be definitively related to known history in or around Canaan in the early second millennia BCE. Abraham is identified as coming from Ur of the Chaldeans, but the Babylonians were known to exist as the Chaldeans until a much later time. I'm so telling you, it. these are not... These are not um, uh, 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 comedic uh, folks. Hold on, sign that. Did you get Here's me? another. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 most histories of ancient Israel no longer consider information about the Egyptian sojourn, the Exodus, and the wilderness wanderings recoverable or even relevant to Israel's emergence. Most important is the fact that no clear extra biblical evidence exists for any aspect of the Egyptian sojourn, Exodus, or wilderness wanderings. Brother, if I had a mic, I would drop it. All right, so I want you to hear that biblical historians don't make the argument that you're making anymore because they have been searching for what you are ascertaining for literally more than a millennia. And they have found buckus. In fact, they have found artifacts, evidence, textual evidence, fossils, everything that goes in the other direction. So for you to argue that Israel has its beginning in their exodus from Egypt, tells us that you are not talking about history, you are talking about belief. Well, I, wouldn't I don't you. have a problem if you're no, going to talk about belief. No, you but, when you, but when you mix history and belief together, you're going to have problems. Now, now, All right, let him go, Jabari. Now, now here's, the, here's the problem. Now, here's where it comes to bad philosophy. Because if you notice when he just read, what he just read in that first article by the person who was a theologian or, or archaeologist, whatever. Wait, you know, theologians, archaeologists are very different. Which well, one were they? Okay, that's fine. Hold on. <laughs> archaeologist, notice, or historian. I'm sorry, historian. <laughs> if you notice it says in the known, what does it say in that article? The known, what again? Read it again. The well, do you want me to read the quote again? Oh. You don't want to do that. Hold on, read, the quote again. Read, read what it says. The no, that's, that's like me rolling over you with the car, and you said, "Back okay, up, please." Watch this. Watch this. You ready? I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Pull it up. I'm waiting for you to pull it up. Oh, okay. Here we go. I'll yeah, pull it up again. I can. So I don't want to misquote it. Hold on, I'll pull it up again. I want to show y'all how to look up key words and how they get real slick with stuff. Oh my goodness, this is slickness, right? Watch this. Pull it up. Watch this. Give me a sec. Go ahead. Okay. 
Now, it says, until the last several decades, historians of ancient Israel have tended to begin their accounts of Israel's history. Let's jump down. Where is it at? Where is it at? Is this the one? And those in uh, Judges and Evidence. Oh, here it is. Right the first here. one. You want right, the next one? Right. This is it. But it's now generally recognized that there is nothing specific in the Genesis story that can be definitely, definitely, however you say it. Definitively. Definitively, I'm sorry, related to known history. You see that? What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean when it says known history? Dear brother. Just answer the question, brother. You are going to assert that something occurred. You have to have evidence of it. What yes, Paul and McNutt and the other um, uh, scholars are saying is that as they look at the artifacts and the text, they cannot confirm anything in this narrative. No, it says known history. What does that mean when it says known history? All of the histories that any historian has studied. Okay, now watch this. Is it possible that what they have not excavated is where something can exist at? Oh my goodness. Answer that question. Brother, I am a historian, so I will answer this correctly. Of course, if there is new information found, people will actually have to change their ideas. But what I'm saying to you, I'm, I'm How's it a fact then? How's it a fact? But what I'm saying to you is the way that history is done is that you look for artifacts and you look for textual evidence and you look for all the things that can support it. You're saying that just because it hasn't been found, by the way, trillions of dollars have been spent for over, over a half millennium searching for it and they have not found it. In fact, what have they have found is the opposite. You can no longer stand on this. The biblical historians, why don't you look up Paula and Mignotta, you can see who she is. Ronetta, you stand for black power, right? Yes, yes, sir. What he's doing is, it's called taxonomy and how they define and, 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 and how they feel that we should argue when it comes to academia, he's a product of what you call white supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I am arguing that as Africans, we should follow the traditions of our ancestors. If that is not the, the antidote to white supremacy, I don't know what is. Hey, let me ask you you are arguing, wait a minute, you are arguing that you should follow a text, follow a tradition, follow the social mores of your enslavers, and I am the white supremacist? Let me ask How you dare you? you? <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Sonetta, Sonetta, Sonetta. Listen, hey, bro. when you get to elements, polonium is called polonium because of what, Jabari? What? The element polonium is called polonium. I don't know enough about polonium to answer that question. Hey, guess why it's called polonium? Why? because they named it after somebody's name that was close to Polonium. And so what I'm saying is this is, if a nation come in and control your education, guess what they can do? Classify your terms. Brother, brother your terms, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta respond. Hold on, hold on, Sonnet, our quick response. The folks who have been doing this study, many of them were the most devout Christians, Muslims, and um, and and Hebrews and, and people who follow the, the Jewish tradition. And they are saying that as they do their study, they are not finding that, that which would edify their tradition. Notice in the quote that I read, it says that most historians of the Bible used to think that the Bible actually gave us historical evidence and now they realize it doesn't. These are people who are, who like you love that text. And they're telling you honestly, because they are also scholars, that they cannot find any evidence of it. And right, I gotta go, I gotta move forward. Brother Jabari, this question is for you. Go ahead. Because I asked Ron G already. Oh, go oh, ahead. G consciousness. Is Christianity originally from Kemet Jabari? Answer it and then explain. I'm gonna say first, yes. And no, mostly yes. Notice I said yes first. Because the traditions of Kemet, I'm talking about myth, I'm talking about characters, I'm talking about incidents, I'm talking about a lot names. Many of them 
can be found in the comedic narrative. The reason why I say no is because it's almost like, and I know Sonetta is old enough to remember this. Remember when, if you lived, if you were in a black school, sometimes you'd get photocopies of stuff that you couldn't even read because it had been photocopied so many times. You're like, I can't even read this thing. Christianity is a copy of a copy of a copy of a poor copy. And so there are many things in Christianity that certainly we would not see in Kemet that absolutely say that it is a very poor copy. One example, and I'm not gonna go into the example because I wanna give a simple answer, is the misogyny, the, the rampant hatred of women that we see in the biblical narrative. That is not something you're going to see in ancient Africa and ancient Kemet. You're not gonna see hatred for women. You're not gonna see women being told that they have to marry their rapist because the rapist pays the father for, their, for them. You're not gonna see that kind of stuff. That's, that's stuff that other people did when they didn't understand what we did. They put their stuff in there. And so Christianity is a copy, but it is a poor copy. Right, so you muted. Hold on, G, hold on, G. Um, same question for you, G Consciousness. Um, is Christianity originally from Kemet and the last statement but that Jabari made, I would like for you to address that. Is Christianity also deals with misogyny? No, uh, I, I, I disagree with that because um, furthermore, Christianity teaches on how you should love your wife as Christ loved the church. Secondly, is that when you look at how, uh, um, like when you look at Asiatic culture of Israel, these are not, this is not even white European culture. This is Asians that have this culture. So when they say, well, this book came from the white man, the white man ain't, they don't circumcise, they wasn't circumcising themselves. And I ain't got nothing against white people, but- Where did they get circumcision from? So, no, hold on. That's fine. That's fine. If you no, say- no, answer, You can't just say it's fine. Answer the question for the audience. I'm not, where does it believe they got so-called circumcision from? Uh, I'm not sure where they got it from. You where it is, is it, you know you have an answer, brother. Don't play. Uh, you might where say, is it believed that they got circumcision from? Um, they, they say they, most, most people say they adopted it from Kemet or something. Okay, thank you. Right, but see, me, me personally, I but believe, Answer my question, brother. Go back to my question. Okay, okay so. Do so, you think, do you think Christianity is originally from Kemet? I don't think Christianity is originally from Kemet because- You don't find, um, um, G Khan, you don't see no similarities, nothing in, in Christianity that you can also find in Kemet. You don't see no, nothing. I see universal principles, principles. Oh, goodness. I see, I see, I see you. I, I see things that are universal, universal that is common among different uh, cultures of people, not just Kemet. Brother, Brother G. Khan, there's a real problem with what you're saying, because there are even sections of the Bible that are verbatim from comedic text. We're not talking about ver, um, universal principles. There are sections of the biblical, of the text that you have. Like what section? That come. Point out. You want me to read you the quotes? You don't want me to do that. Point one out. Give me one of them. Bring it okay. out, Jabari. Bring it out. Okay. I, I don't know why he wants. Why are you? He, I roll over him with the van. He said, back up, brother. My legs ain't broken enough. Right. <laughs> Give me one. So, okay, so I can do that. I can do that. Give me a moment. Yeah, I don't um, I'm going to show you exactly where um, we actually see. It's going to take me a quick moment because I didn't know that you would ask for that. I'm not sure you know that you should bet you. Right. So what, so Sanita, what he's going to do is he's going to show something of, of wisdom and, and wisdom is not something that's just subject to one color or culture of people. So he's going to find something that is basically your, your universal, or either it might be a proverb that we see that understanding was given unto man, not just to Solomon, but all men was given understanding. And if you lack understanding, it's because you ain't looking at your assets or the traditions that was passed down to. What it shows is there's a connection between these people that he doesn't want to talk about. Brother, brother, what I'm, I'm not talking about general wisdom. I'm talking about the fact that it is verbatim from a comedic text. Verbatim. That's not, that's not general wisdom. That is, and I'm going to use this term advisedly, stealing stuff. That's what it is. 
poor. So let us know. let us read a let's look at Proverbs chapter 22. You can share your screen. Versus, this is kind of small. Let's see if I can find it for you. Hold on a second. Give me a moment. Yeah, you can talk, Z-Con, while he's looking for stuff. Right. So as I stated, he was going to go to Proverbs, right? Now, when you now this this, this that we see are Proverbs. They are sayings. The, the, the Asia and Africa world share certain sayings that they call okay. sayings. You're really doing that? So, that, so that's what he, I told y'all what he was going to do. You're I really that. doing that, brother? Come You're on. really doing that? You're really doing that? And when we get done with this, I got one question for you. I want to ask you about one of your texts, and I want to read it to you when we get okay, done. Okay, that's fine. We could do that. I don't know why you say one of my texts. Well, because, then, brother, it. the reality is that you have to recognize it's your text as well. But that's the problem that we have here. No, it ain't my Here we text. go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let me see if I can just read you go ahead, brother. from this section here. Proverbs 22, 17 to 18, right? Incline thy ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart to my doctrine. For it is pleasant if thou keep them in thy belly that they may be established upon thy lips. This is from the earlier comedic text known today as the instructions of a minimal. Give thine ear and hear what I say and apply thine heart to apprehend. It is good for thee to place them in thine heart let them rest in the casket of thy belly, that they may act as a peg upon thy, th th thy um, tongue. Um, here's another one from Proverbs 22. Rob not the poor, for he is poor, neither oppress or crush the lowly in the gate. This is for men of Beware of robbing the poor and oppressing the afflicted. We can go on and on and on and on. I want you to understand that... Um, most biblical scholars today, the overall majority of biblical scholars actually know this now. In What's fact, wait, 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 hold on. If you look at the most recent translation of the Bible, guess what they have in there now? The Bible actually says that this text comes from the instructions of a minimal. We're not talking about general information. We are talking about plagiarism. All right, so let me so what I want you to understand what's is what's the date of a minimal? If you are saying what's the date of a minimal? Many believe that a minimal, because you have to understand that these texts, including many biblical texts, have been copied and copied and copied, right? What philologists do, people who study languages, they look at a language and they say, this language comes from this period. And so most scholars would say that a minimal seems to be an old kingdom text. And they have, very, they have several copies of them, some more complete than others. The old kingdom begins in what year, dear brother? All right, so I'm asking- but Wait, 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 wait. What year does the old kingdom hold on, begin? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I what gotta year is a, it's a simple stop, question. Hold on, hold on, stop, brother. I'm asking you, what, what is the year of a man of What is the co 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 conventional chronology that they given him? What is I'm saying name? that they often say that it is actually somewhere in around 26 or 2500 BCE. Well, the, the, the writing that you quoted is they, they have it uh, 1040 to 1034 BC. That's when the, the actual document that was found is from that date. Well, where's the why I, wait, wait listen to me. Minute. Listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What philologists do is that they study the language of something that is written and they are able to say, this language comes from this period. Because what we have found in a minimal, in fact, what we find in many biblical, this happens a lot in the ancient world and, and the less ancient world, like in the biblical narrative. You'll find many copies of something. So you could date the actual copy that you found, but since you know you have many copies of it, the work of scholars is to say, where does it come from? What's the assumption? But here, I just, I told you what the, the oh, assumption yeah, is that it's an old kingdom oh, text. Here's a, let me explain to y'all, here's the assumption. Now he knows that this text comes from about, I want to say 1040 to 1034 BC, right? Here's the assumption. Is it, what they'll do is they'll look at words that may have been used earlier time, right? Am I right or wrong about that? 
I don't know who the they is. I don't know what you're saying. I, Charles, I can't Charles. agree with you yet. You haven't given me Hold nothing. on, did y'all, Jabari, did you show the comparison? Yeah, sign letter. Oh, I went to, the, I went in there. Sign letter. I showed you quite a few of them. I can show more. No, I, I no, I didn't see it because I went out. To I mean, it seems like the brother wants me to run back over with him with the truck. It's but okay. No, that's all right. It's all right. I'll see it. But I'm gonna switch over to another question because if I keep letting y'all do this, we're gonna miss out. I ain't gonna be able to ask these questions. So um, go ahead. This question go for you, G Kong. Do you support Kimmet as a true account of our history? Or, or are you as the people who reject it like others? Or do you reject it like other Bible believers? Like a lot of Bible believers reject Kemet history altogether. I support Kemet as a, as, a, as a history, as a true history of, the, of my ancestors because possibly I got East African ancestors. You know what I'm saying? I'm not an Israelite, you know what I'm saying? So my, I'm closely related to people from, I'm Sub-Saharan African. So I, I'm, I, I, I support when it comes to, is it a history? But you know what I'm saying? I don't have that type of, you know, I don't. So, so let me get this straight. You're not an Israelite? I'm not an Israelite. So why are you fighting so hard for Israel, brother? No, he's <laughs> What's Christian. going on? He's a Christian. Hold on. He's a Christian. Yeah, Hold I know, I know. That. That so why are you not, a, was Jesus an Israelite? Yeah, he was an Israelite. Are you trying to follow Jesus? I'm, I'm just as, hold on. I'm just as the ones who was in the North that Norma came with probably cosmologies that they disagreed with, but they adopted those cosmologies. Oh my So God. what does Norma got to do with what? Because I'm using as an example, because if, if Israel came to me and, and presented something to me that I seen, that I was like, whether if you want to look at it and say, this is mythology, it has a, 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 a story that is, that is a reality to me, this, what I'm living in my life for us, for instance, on certain things that we see in Genesis chapter three concerning the consciousness of man or man becoming aware of the self to where he begins to uh, go off into a stage of materialism and, 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 and loses his footing with the creator. So I, I, I think that that is a great starting point for me as uh, to look at that literature and even if it says, even if you say it's not true, it's still conveying something, a powerful message. And I see that that message is powerful to me. So that's why I have plus, it. plus beats, plus beats. Um, statements and comments like that gets you blocked off my channel. It's all right for you to disagree, but when you when you are disrespectful in your disagreement, it just gets you blocked. So you can no longer participate in what we do. So um, go ahead, brothers. Yeah, so, so that's why that's why I subscribe oh, to that right. because I like the the I, I like what it brings. So I am a what you call I've been engrafted into that type of he 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 say he came it he engrafted that way. I've been engrafted into basically what I see as the Israelite can, uh, teachings. Can I say it with the problem that we have? And this is where I started in the beginning, and maybe you'll be able to better hear why I started the way I did. One of the things that I I hear you doing, GCon is you're looking at history and you're saying, that's why I don't like ancient Kemet. No, I just I don't like- Wait, wait, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. And then you look at spirituality and you say, this is why I like the Israelite teachings. You are not comparing apples to apples. No, I didn't Wait, let me, let me finish. Let me explain what I'm saying. Jabbar, I want something to be clear so nobody takes this and run with this. I never said, I don't like ancient Kemet. What I don't like is, is the rulers, the majority of the rulers that came in and ruled over the native people of the land in a way as they rule, uh, we, we're being oppressed and ruled over today. I never first of all, I, first of all, first of all, you have to, you have to hear, at least the audience should hear this. You have not supported that. That is not something, there is nothing in the historical record that supports that idea. We just the only thing that you have done is you have looked at uh, at later narratives and you're superimposing them on Kemet. This fourth millennium, right? There is nothing that says that the Kemetic rulers suppressed and oppressed their people like we see today. There's nothing. Family, I want you to hear. I don't even know why he would say that. Okay, let me ask There's you a nothing question. Nothing that says. The Hyksos, right? Yes. 
Now, you really want to go there? Hold on. You got the Hyksos, right? Yes. You got the Thebians. To the south of the Thebians. Uh, you're talking about the, the natives of Waset? The Kushites, right? Thebes, Thebes is, the Kushites are not from. Hold on, hold on. Stop for a minute. Stop, stop. You're saying the wrong terms. Hold on, no, I'm no, no. Okay, what's your terms, that's all. Well, okay, listen. You have the Hyksos, right? And in between the Hyksos, you have the Thebians, right? Wrong. Hold on. Okay, well, who is it then? I told Thebes is a Greek word. Okay, well, what is it then? What, what word do you want to use? Then? I believe what you're trying to refer to is the citizens of Waset. Okay, Waset. Now, who is to the south of the citizens of Waset? The, almost the entire continent of Africa is to the south of. Oh, hold on. We got in 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 the, in the Stelia Papyrus, right? The Stelia Papyrus. What is it? Two of them. How do you say? What's it? the Stelia Papyrus? That's like saying the book of chapters. What? Oh. What? What is, is is it? Two of them. What is it called? How do you? I don't book? even know what you're referring to right now. Oh, okay, so you don't know about the stories of Ahotep, uh, Kamos, oh, stop it. Kamos. Oh, of course, I, I taught that lecture just on Wednesday night. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Now, was the Hyksos in connection with those who were the Nubians or Kushites? It seems that the Hyksos, who are foreign people, had an alliance with at least one of the groups of Nubia. Because here's, here's the problem that we have, uh, Brother g -Con. For most of Kemetic history, Nubia is not one nation. They're disparate groups of people. Kemet had problems with some of them at some times and had good relations with some of them sometimes. And they had problems with some of those groups at other times. We're talking about 3,000 years. Let me ask you a question. Most of, wait a minute, I'm trying to, brother, I'm trying to explain it to you why you're not getting it right. Please listen to what I'm saying. I'm not telling you my opinion now because I'm just telling you what the history is, right? It groups though, it don't say groups. What do you mean, What what's it? What we, it? Listen, I, when we look at the papyrus, it tells you which papyrus. Okay, let's pull it up. I got it right here. Matter of fact, keep on talking. I'll pull it up for you. Keep on talking. I, I, I want you to hear that our brother has superimposed the Bible. He superimposed Darwin. He superimposed the politics of the United of the United States upon your ancient African narrative. And that's the reason why he fails to understand its deeper, deeper, deeper teaching. He's an intelligent brother. He's doing reading. I would suggest to him that he does more reading about the story of ancient Africa rather than trying to shoehorn it into the things that he thinks he understands in the modern world. Because when you do that, you lack an understanding of what is actually occurring. He is saying that Namur oppressed people. There's nothing that says that Namur oppressed people. Namur had a battle. Namur had a battle. But so did Solomon, right? Yeah, I think you support Solomon. So did David. Do you support David? By the way, Solomon, David didn't even exist. All right, so let me ask you this question. All right, so listen, because you said a group of people, right? You said a group. But I said know, that Nubia was comprised of several groups of people. All right, so where do we get the, where, hold on, where do we get the story of the Hyksos from? Where does it come from? It comes from um, usually the, what is called today, the autobiography of um, Amos, son of Ibana. That's, mo that's where part of it comes from. There's also the victory stele of, um, there's the stele of Kamos, and there's also the stele of Amos. All right, so, so it comes from several places and from archaeological work where you actually see sites and bodies and, and artifacts and all of that. That's where okay, the story comes so, from. So where do you get the story of when they was chased? Where is that story of when they was chased after out of, um, out of the Hyksos was chased out of or led out of? No, they were chased. Uh, it's, it's partially he gave them, he gave them, a, it says in that story that he gave them, they made an agreement and he gave them a head start. Where'd and, you read that? That's that's what I'm like. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, let me get this paper for. Are you talking about the auto the autobiography of Amos, son of Ebana? Nope, that's not it. It's so I don't know which one you're reading. That's another one. Yep. So and show it to I, us. I, I, I got a, and I did a class on it too about a year ago too. Oh, brother, I don't know how you could teach classes on Kemet because you haven't learned that much. Uh, you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching stuff that you hide. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Right. right. And so, and so um, 
Let me find and and uh, I see Kut Netter saying that's 18th dynasty. Actually, he's referring to the 15th through 17th dynasties. Uh -huh. I know he doesn't know that. Right. Who doesn't know that? You. Oh, you talking about the greater and lesser uh, Hicksus period? I know what it is. What dynasty would you say that they um, fall in? The uh, 15th and 16th dynasty is the, uh, I believe, the greater Hicksus period. But then you have a lesser Hicksus period that I want to say that is in, um, I want to say around about the 12th or the, tw the 12th or the 13th dynasties in those areas, I believe, to where you got Hyksos that are coming in, and then you have a- I asked you about dynasties. You say what? You need to take my class, brother. Whether you agree with me or not, I'm gonna teach you history. Right, and so so you have a great influence on Asiatics within Kemet, within the 11th, the 12th, and then it, it stops around the 13th and 14th, and then it goes back to the 15th and the 16th dynasty. They call it the greater and lesser Hyksos period, to where you can see that Asiatics are definitely coming in, and also they're mining in certain places that, that are in Kemet, they're servants. Thank you. Those are the greater, uh, lesser and greater Hyksos periods. You can look it up. I'm but not anyway, even sure, I'm not sure if you understand the question I asked you. Anyone, I want to ask you about, yeah, you asked me about the dynasty, and I told you. I said I, I, the influence of when we start seeing uh, um, the Hyksos beginning, I mean, the greater and lesser period Hyksos coming in is is around those times, 15, is, uh, 15 to 17 in those areas, right? And then you also have a lesser period that you see in the past, which is around the 11th, I want to say to the 12th uh, 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 dynasties in those areas. That's incorrect, brother. All right, cool. So I want to bring up this because you say it's incorrect, but but I want to I want to share this real quick. And I want to read this. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Read this real quick. So Tell us what you're reading. Tell us the source. Right, you know. So, oh, you see my screen? I'm reading. Um, I can see it now. The creation, uh, the, the 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 history of the creation of the gods and of the world, uh, version A by uh, E. A. Wallace Budge. Right. All right. So I want to know something about this text. Let me read it to you real quick. Wait, are you talking about the Hicks also? You. No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we disagree. We're gonna disagree with with the Hicksos. I believe, like, 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 I'm telling you that the the papyrus that I'm looking for is a papyrus that explains between uh, generals. I told you what it was. You're not listening to me. I'm the historian. I'm telling you what text okay, it is. Okay, so, 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 if you pull up that papyrus, right? You pull it up, and in that papyrus, it doesn't say group. It says that there are Nubians. That is a kingdom that is to Brother, the Brother, listen to me. You are not going to find the word Nubian in a. Well, not Nubian. It says what Kush. I said there is a Kushite who are to the south who is a kingdom. Okay, who, you find it, and I think you're going to be surprised what you see. Who is in league with? I Let think you are going to be surprised what you see. I'm trying to tell you, as someone who has right. teaches, teaches college level classes on this, you are. So hold on. Matter of fact, uh, I'm going to mute my mic. I got a book right in the car. I'm going to go grab it right now. I'll pull oh it up. my goodness. You going all the way to the car, bro? <laughs> Is it the car that ran over <laughs> you? <laughs> so go ahead, Jabari, while he going to the car, go and break it all down. Go ahead. Woo. Go ahead, Jabari. I, I, I just want us to I, I just want us to say he's sharing his screen. He, he should have left his screen unshared. I just want us to say that um it's really important for us to um get to the wait. Let me see if I can do this. Maybe I can do this and then unshare. There we go. I think we unshared his screen. Um, I think that what we have to acknowledge is that what I hear him doing. How was you able to unshare his screen? You're a bad dude, man. Well, I, I ain't know I, you could do that. I teach classes all the time. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. <laughs> I teach my class on the history of Kemet, known as Three Millennia of Excellence, the History of Ancient Kemet, on Google Meets and I, I use don't think G, I don't think G Khan studied you yet, brother. That's why he don't know you, Jabari. This is our first time meeting, bro. And I'm enjoying <laughs> the brother. Right? Yeah, I love the conversation I'm enjoying too. The brother. But what yeah, I'm I love saying it. is, what I'm saying is, is that he's gonna have to study the history of ancient Africa to understand ancient Africa. What I hear him doing, and I'm sure that the audience hears him doing this, is they he's looked at all of the later texts from other people, and he's superimposing what he's learned about those on top of Kemet. So he's actually arguing that the people of Kemet were oppressed by their rulers. 
And I, I have asked him since the beginning of our conversation, two hours ago, to support that with a source. And he has not been able to do it. He just says, well, that's what always happens. By the way, if that's the argument he's making, if that's what always happens, then he should be upset with the Bible too, because it right. always happens. And the second part of what I hear him saying is, because he sees Namr and other kings have battles and wars, and yes, some people were killed. I'm not justifying death and destruction or, or battles where people get killed. That's for someone else to do. I'm not a general, I'm a priest. I'm about life. I, I, I want you to know that if you are disturbed by conflict and war, you're not going to see more conflict and war in any text more than the Bible. And you're going to see your God supporting the wholesale genocide of people. If you have an issue with conflict in a historical narrative of Kemet, then you've got to have a bigger con problem with the story of the, the stories of the Bible where God wipes out whole cities, whole groups of people. They're, they're not worth it. He actually said, I read to you from 1 Samuel, kill all the men all the children, all the babies, the sheep, the ox, the donkeys. What did the child do? You e mean even the donkey got to die? Right. So, I mean, God, come on now. So hold on. So the reason why God is wrecking or going in like a bowling ball. Wait, wait, wait. Are you about to justify the murder of children? Hold on, hold on. Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. <laughs> right. Hold on. So hold on. Stop. Now listen. The reason, hey, let me ask you this question. Whoa! The reason why God or the creator is going in on nations because of injustice and also because of nations devouring one another and destroying to the point to where they're just not just at Can all. Can I ask you a question then? Yeah. If that's what you agree on, would you agree that the United States is a def decadent nation that has been destroying people? Uh, in, 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 a yes? in an unrighteous manner. Okay, so let me ask you this then. Are, what citizen are you a country of? So hold on. So what let me citizen say this. are you a country of? I'm, I, I am a citizen of the United States of America. Do you have children? So hold on. Yes, I do. Do so, are they citizens of the United States? Yes. Dead them all. Dead them all. Hold Your on, God on. says kill hold them on. all. Your hold baby's on. gonna die, hold and on. you got a problem with no, the no, with no, a, no, a king no, that no, goes no, to no, war? Hold on, Jabon. Listen, listen. In order to in order for to free a people, there has to be the conquering of the rulers to free the people who are being held captive. That's, that's brother, a fact. My brother, brother, first Samuel is not about conquering here. rulers. I got it here, I got it, so let's deal with that. Oh, wait a minute, first Samuel is not about oh, conquering rulers. Sure first Samuel is not. about, listen to me, first I, Samuel is I, I, not I, about I, conquering I, rulers. First I, Samuel I, is about genocide. Listen, sometimes genocide is a righteous judgment. Wow. Yeah, it has to be. Wow. So, so that on. means that your baby should be dead right now. Hold on, hold on, listen, stop for a minute. Stop. Listen. If you have, hold on. First of I'm all, I'm listening. I'm listening. First of all, if you notice, he told them to drive them out or he told them to kill them, right? <laughs> now, that's what he said. Now, did he say that to the nations that was a far off or to the nations that was in that vicinity? Brother, do you want me to read? You don't want me to read the text. Oh, I'm just, I, I listen, but hold on, but hold on, listen, listen. The reason why I'm saying it is this is, did he tell them to also kill their animals too? Yes. Now let me ask you a question. Anybody that goes and knows that if he says, kill the kids, kill the animals, he says, kill everything, don't take nothing, their gold, leave it all, burn it. Anybody that does that, one would sit back and think and say, why would he tell them to burn the gold and the animals and stuff? What about the children? Hold on, why would he tell them to do that? You know why he told them to do that? I'm gonna tell because you why. Because this stuff is European hogwash, oh, that's oh, why. Oh, you say European, right? Now yeah. those are European, Asiatics are not Europeans. Oh. Dear brother, dear so brother. Start, so, so listen, you, hey, so hold on, Jabari, you can't go listen. You can't go to any sumoologist or Asiatic or, 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 or any anybody who deals with Asiatic culture and tell them that customs that we see that are in the Bible is European customs. You wouldn't go to no scholar and say that. Would you or would you not? I would say that. What, would what, say scholar, that. what scholar would agree to you? This, this I would say that. I think that a lot of folks would acknowledge, there are many who acknowledge now, 
not the majority, I'll admit. Right. I think there are many that would acknowledge that some of the books that you are seeing have been heavily plagiarized. Some of the things that you're seeing were created to empower Rome. But that doesn't mean that it's European at all culture. Would you consider Rome, uh, like would, you con would you consider Rome European? Rome came in a, a thousand years later. Brother, many of these books were caught up, they hey, were written in Greek it, and it, codified it, by the Roman Empire. Listen, when it says that, hey, listen, when it says in the text, when you look at the culture or the, or the judgments, uh, they're, they are greatly related to what we call Hammurabi codes. That is not European codes. So any scholar that will agree to you that is European does not know the consensus of the scholars when it comes to academia. That is not the consensus of the scholars. Yes, it is. All right, so you got to prove that argument, brother. I want to look Can't just book. make it. Hold on, Jabari. Let me bring this book out right here. This is David Rowe, right? Lords of the Avaris, right? Now, Avarice. Avarice. Okay, cool. So I want to go to page 97. And I want to show you where it's just at. So we have. Can I ask you a question about that book? Uh, not yet. Let me bring this okay. up. I don't want to. I don't want to jump, throw me off and divert to. Okay, something. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go right, ahead. It says this is page one hundred and one. It said it is almost as if we are picking up with Senefre's conversation with the Theban courtiers came to an abrupt end at the crumbled edge of the papyrus of Salier the second. Now Salier is spelled. S A L L I E R. There's two papyruses. There's one and there's two of Salier. Are you are you familiar with those papyrus? Yes, I am. All right. So, in those papyrus, it talks about. Matter of fact, let me give you uh, one of the quotes. Um, this is be one of the quotes because I got the direct quotes right here. All right. So, this is. Uh, it says. It says, Speos Artemidos, are you familiar with that? Retrospective on Hexus, rule where the at rule where she refers to Amu, right? Now I want to show you some of what it reads here. It says here, the mighty ruler in Thebes, Kamos, the strong protector of Egypt. He says, I went north because I was strong enough to attack the Asiatics through. Okay, I'm gonna get you. My daughter that came down here, you you finna get destroyed. You're talking too loud, right? Right. She heard me downstairs and it came down. Let me pick up. Hold on. Okay, go 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 upstairs tomorrow. I'll be I'll be up there the minute. Okay. Let me pick up. That's a good brother. I'm gonna have to read this. Cause she he ready she ready to. You ready? We finna just we finna get with him. Let's go. All right. So look. Okay. So. It's Brother, it. I need to say I disagree with you, but I really I I the more and more I speak to you, the more and more I like you. You and I need to go to dinner and have this argument. All right. Because right. you're a solid black man, but I think that you're wrong on these issues. So all right, so cool. So, are, so do you agree with the Sally of Papyrus, though? Are you familiar with it? I am familiar with it. Okay, so you so you don't agree with this right here? I don't agree with David Roll's assessment. No, no, it's no, it's it's not that. It's actually a quote from the Papyrus. Go ahead, read it. Okay. It says, the mighty ruler in Thebes, Cosmos the Strong, protector of Egypt. I went north. I was strong enough to attack the Asiatics through the command of Amun, just of councils. My valiant army was in front of me like a blast of fire. The troops of the Magi, Nubian, he got quote, Nubian mercenaries, were ahead of us, seeking out the Asiatics and pushing back their uh -oh. positions. Uh oh! You just you just ethered yourself. Did you see no, what you no, just no, read? No, 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 no. You I just see what you just read. No. You just ethered yourself. You jumping ahead keep reading. Of yourself. Keep reading. Ahead. Keep reading. You're jumping proving ahead. my point. I don't know if you realize it. No, no, you're jumping ahead of yourself. Let me tell you why. Go ahead. So it says, uh, East and West had their had their uh, faith, their fat and army forged and supplies everywhere. I sent out a strong troop of Magi while I was on the patrol. It says to him, it says, uh, Tati, the son of Pepe, within the town of Nepharesis, or whatever he said, would not let him escape while I held back the Asiatics who had withstood the army of Egypt. He had made Nepharesis the nest of Asiatics. I spent the night in my boat with 
contended heart. He says, when I, when the day broke, I was with, I was on him like a falcon. He says, when the time break, when the time break fast had come, I attacked him. I broke down his walls. I killed the people and made his wife come down to the riverbank to plead for mercy. My soldiers were like ravenous lions and spoiled the town, taking slaves, cattle, milk, fat, and honey, dividing up the property to the content, right? Now, this is the Asiatics in the A in the in the north. Would you agree that he's attacking the Asiatics with the with the uh with the Magi in the north, right? Would you agree? Yes, with that? I would agree with that. Now, let's look at when he attacks, I mean when uh when they call for help for the uh, the Kushites, the Asiatics call for help, and it's, it's being recorded within the Thebian's literature concerning them calling for help to the Kushites in the south, who they were sandwiched in between. The Thebians was in between the Kushites and the Asiatics who had an agreement with each other. So watch this. And it's, the same, it's in the state of Papyrus. So now that you see that, now watch what it says here. Keep going. Now. You've already proven my point. I'm explaining it to you when you're done. All right. So this is uh, it says the uh, the uh, it says now King Apophis desired to send a. This, this is what he's calling him. He's mocking him. Where's the other one? At? Right. He sent the letter and they intercepted the letter. Which one is that? Sent here somewhere. You remember that? You read that before, didn't you? When they sent the letter and the letter was intercepted. And to, to those who, and they caught it from the south and uh, they came up, where is it at? And these are not, these, this was a king that was to the south. So that, Can I explain why what you're reading is a problem? Why is it a problem? For what, for what you're arguing? Uh, now, first of all, I want you to understand that it is true that the Hyksos, the Hekshasu, had an agreement with the Nubians to the south. It is true, that is, that is a fact, right? And it was uh, a kingdom. But I want you to understand that when we use the word Nubian, in some ways it's an anachronism. Because even in that time, there were some groups that Kemet had alliances with and some groups that they did not. Did you notice that in the beginning of the papyrus, you acknowledge that Nubians, the Magi, are fighting with the Kemetic people? Did you notice that? All right. I did you notice it? Yes. And so what I'm trying to say to you is that at the time that you are speaking, Nubia is not one nation. There are some groups that Kemet has alliances with, and there's some that they do not. I'm not saying, you're right. So here is this right here, and here's a, a stellar that matches. It says, listen ye who are alive upon the earth. Cush came, arose along his length, having stirred up the tribes of what? Why went, right? What is it? Why oh, went? Why why? why? The land of Put and Magi. So Cush is to the south, as I stated. And what are the other ones? Cush is to the south. And it says, What are the went? other places you mentioned? It says the land of Put and Magi. Do you understand that that Wawat is also Nubia? Did you know that? I, it says it right here. It says it's Nubia. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you is that they're di no, you're not hearing point. me. You're not here's hearing me. No, I know that they're different. Here's my point though. I, as I said before, Kush is to the south. Thebes or Wawet is in the middle. The Hyksos is up top. Wawet is also to the south. Hold on. Right. No, it, wait, 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 wait. You, you're misunderstanding the text. Let me explain it to you. I'm reading it right they here. They didn't say Waset. Waset is who you were calling the Thebians. I know that. Wa I just wait, said that. listen to me. Listen, you're misunder... Brother, just let me explain it to you. Wawat is one of the groups of people that we would consider Nubian. Right, it says it right There here. are different groups of people. And they're no. even telling you in your text that they're different groups Look, of people. My, listen, I understand, you're missing my point. What's the your group, point? Make your group, final, make your point. The group that is to the south is the kingdom of Cush, Cushites. That they it's was one called. of the groups, it's one Hold of on. the groups. Hold on, why do you keep saying groups, it's a kingdom? Brother, there's several kingdoms that we would call that we classify as Nubian. Right. So you so what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it seem like that this group is a small group, but this is a large kingdom to the south. Look what it says. So here. it's Wawat. You just read Wawat. And, and what I'm telling you is you got the Hyksos to the north. Yes. Right? Then you got with what they sandwiched uh, the Nubians in between the Kushites. 
The Kushites, no, 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 no. Say that again. I think you missed. No, I think you just misspoke. Say it again. Hold on, hold on. Look, 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 look. The king already said it. Look what he said here in the papyrus. I got the papyrus right here. Look what it says. He says, I sit between these two kings. He says, I sit between an Asiatic and also this king to the south who is a Kushite. That's what it's saying. So he's sandwiched in between them. They got an agreement with each other. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Hold on. There are se listen to me. There are several groups to the south. I'm you telling even you, mentioned Wawat. We know, listen, I know there's several groups to the south. Wawat is also Nubian. Hey, look, okay, look, look at this. Can you see this? Look at the boundaries right here. Can you see it? Right there, bro. We that, know it to the south. That, I'm telling you, I'm you telling you. Hold that on, hold on. doesn't even support what you're saying. Hold on, listen, I'm telling this, yes, it does, because what it's showing you is he says it in his papyrus. He says, I sit between these two kings. That's what he's saying. So he's saying we, you're, we are agreeing on that. What I'm saying to you, listen, listen to me. G Con, please listen to me. Right. Listen to me. I'm not, I'm saying that you don't understand the context of what you're reading. When we use the word Nubian, it's an anachronism. The, in the ancient world, we don't see those people called Nubian. There are several names to the people for the people that are to the south. And for most of Kemetic history, they were not one nation. So you actually have already read in your, the text. You just don't understand that what you're saying is supporting my argument because right. you haven't done enough research. There's okay, the Magi. So Listen to me. Listen. The Magi are one of the Nubian groups. In fact, they are mostly now the secret warriors of Kemet. Then you have, you're rendering that as Kush. I would love to see the tech, the um, the glyphs, but you're rendering that as Kush, that's fine. But you also mentioned Wawat. Wawat is also in that area. Wawat okay. is what most historians would say is another name for Kush. Right, so you're conflating information now. Reason no, why you are conflating the hold information. On, hold, on. hold on, the reason why I'm saying this is because I showed you a map. I showed you Avaris to the north. Avarice. Hold on. I showed you the Hyksos territory to the south, but no, Avarice is the Hyksos territory. Hold on, I'm, hold on, listen, no, brother. You're not understanding what you're reading. You need yeah. to get in my class. Hold on, listen, Avarice bro. is the Avarice is the capital of the Hyksos Empire. I know that. Listen, so why did you say it was to the south of the no, Hyksos? No, no, no. I didn't say that. I, said, I showed you the I saw, so the Hyksos uh, of Avarice. Hyksos territory is to the north, right? Of Avarice. Yes. Right? Okay. The Pelopolis Thebes, right? Elephant time is where you see to the south, right? Yes. Now. I don't agree with the names, but I understand okay. what you're saying. Okay. So what's deeper south? Is it the Kushite territory? Yes and no. Okay, well, hold on. You say yes and no. What does your king say? Because he said he was sandwiched between these two kings. You are not, how could you read the text and not understand it? All right, so I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read the Australian. Listen to what I'm saying to you. There are several kings that, listen, listen, g -Con, look at me for a second. Look at me for a second. You're not listening to me. When we use the word Nubia, it is an anachronism. It does not fit the time. At the time that you are reading, there are several groups that are Nubia, not one, you mentioned at least three different groups. They're all Nubian. Well, I know. Listen. You mentioned the. Wait a minute. You're talking. You're not listening. <laughs> listen to what I'm saying. You mentioned the Magi. They're Nubian, right? I'm using the anachronism so you hear it. They're Nubian, yeah. You mentioned Kush. They are Nubian. You mentioned Wawat. They are Nubian. It's more than one group. And you just proved my point. Black on black against each other in that text. Brother. Black people had disagreements with each other. Right. And what I'm telling you is they agreed with the Asiatics to the north because they had a relationship between each other and it was dealing with politics and kind of uh, economics. There was a there was an agreement between the Hyksos and, the, and one right. of the Nubian groups, at least right. one of the Nubian groups. Right, the kingdoms, actually. The kingdom. It says the kingdom. He says, I sit to the he says, I sit in between these two kings. I got Listen I mean, to me. Listen to right, me. So Read the section that says Wawat so you understand, because I don't think you're hearing what I'm saying. Okay, so listen, which uh, on the map right here? No, it, Wawat is not on the map, because the map oh, is a poor okay, map. Hold on, let me read what I was reading. Let me read. Hey, babe, shut that door for me. All right, so it says. Oh, here it is, right here. It says, 
listen ye, listen you who are alive upon the earth. Cush came, aroused along his length, having stirred up the thieves of Wawat, which in parentheses says Nubi, right? Yes. So, so do you understand now it's more than one group? Listen, I been knew that. Listen. <laughs> Hold on, listen. No, you're not. Listen, when you when you watch this, they're gonna tell you. Listen. Oh, goodness. This came, look, look, the land uh, it says it, it says he stirred up the thieves of Wawat Nubia. So here comes Kush, right? It says he stirs up the what we would call the Thebians or Wawat Nubia. No. Huh? Okay, go on. You're wrong. You're reading it wrong. Okay, well, I'm I'm gonna read it and let them look. Sinetta, let me let me let me read this to you. So you're you, reading it wrong. It you're not understanding what you're reading. Okay, listen, listen, Sinetta. It says, "Listen, you who are alive upon the earth, Kush came. So Kush is coming, right? Now look what it says. He arose along his length, having stirred up the tribes of Wawat. So Kush coming to stir up the tribes of Wawat are the Nubians, right? So then it says, the land of Punt and the Magi. So we see that the Hyksos was to the south, to the north, right? Yes. Now, when we, when, if I go, see, you won't let me read the papyrus, because if I read the, the other- You read the whole thing, and I listened to you. No, 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 listen. No, I haven't even read the part where he says, I sit sandwiched between these two people. You read it several times. Oh, read I, it. I, I ain't read that to you. Listen, listen, G-Con, you're not right. understanding what you're reading. And I'm trying to explain. Look at look at the screen. Look at the screen for a second. This is light work. Do you see what Wawat is? I see it. Wawat is one of the Nubian groups. So in the papyrus that you are reading, they are actually telling you that this battle is more complex than Kemetic people versus Nubians. And that's the way you're trying to render it. There are several groups that make up what we would consider Nubia. Some of them were allied with Kemet. Some of them were allied with the Hyksos. The this is more is complex. But you. here's the general thing that you have to understand. If you think that because two black pe groups of black people have a disagreement, it means that they're evil, stop it. No, 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 no. Listen, wait a minute. Let me finish. Nations have disagreements sometimes. This you're, is not black on black crime. No, you're misunderstanding. What you're, what you're getting here is this is. You're getting here, like, listen, here it is right I found it. It says, his majesty spoke in his place to the council of nobles who were in his routine. It says, let me understand what the royal strength of mine is for. One prince is in Avaris. Another is in Cush. And here I sit between an Asiatic and a Cushite. Each man has his slice of Egypt. Dividing up the land with me, no one can journey as far as Memphis, even though it is Egyptian water. See, he, Apophis, even has control of Hopmamalopolis, or however you say it. No man can settle down when he is oppressed by the taxes of this Asiatic. So what he's saying is this, I sit between these two people. So what I'm showing you is this is, and you're getting taught tonight, I'm showing you the economics and politics is big here. Because you have Asiatics that sit to the north of High Hexus, this and Kushites to the to the south that's going against other Kushites or Magi or Nubians or Wawet that's in the middle. Because you know why? It's about paper. And this is the system that I'm talking about that we have to look at and say that you shouldn't be led or driven just because you have something politically or economically with somebody to sell out. You shouldn't do that. And that's what the biblical text teaches. That is not what you're reading. Let me listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I, you are not, you are really not understanding what you're reading. Not from an Afrocentric perspective, not from a Eurocentric perspective. No historian that knows the history, everyone that listens will say, Brother G Khan doesn't understand what he's reading. First of all, during this period, the Hyksos were in control of Kemet. They were foreign people that had taken control of an African nation. And during that time, the Nubians had even come in and taken a part of Kemet as well. So the native Kemetic people wanted their land back. They fought against the Hyksos and at least one of the Nubian groups. You just pulled my point. Some of the Nubian groups, well, some of the Nubian groups 
were allied with the Hyksos. They did, the, the Kemetic people did battle with all of them. Sinatra. But why is it, wait, listen to me. This, you have a very simplistic understanding of, the, of history. When nations exist, every nation in the world, every nation in the world has strife with its neighbors at times. That doesn't mean that you invalidate or you, you, you take the luster off of some of the things that those nations have done. You're talking about a native group of people who are fighting to take their land back and that upsets you. But I'm telling you about your yeah, tech that said, no, wait no, a minute, no. wait no. a minute. But I am telling you about, I'm telling you about your text with, where your God says, kill everybody, including the women, the children, and the animals. And you don't have a, you're explaining that. Hey, sign that but then you have a problem with an ancient African king who says, I want to take our nation back. See, see, Sinatra, no, she missed my point. My point was this is, why is it that you have some Southerners linking up with the Hicksus to go against the deviants or other brothers of them of them. Why is that? I guarantee you it's because of paper and money and family ties. I'm but so what so what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, what yeah. if it was about paper and money? Right, what does so that mean? It was. And so 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 sign so what does that mean though? All right, so I got one more boy I want to read for wait you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What does it mean? Yeah, so if it was about what resources, mean is, what I mean is listen, economics, politics, and religion is what run it. Brother, every nation has to deal with economics, politics, and religion. And I showed on that palette to where Kemet came just like the oppressors came with that. Yeah, brother, the people that were being oppressed were the Kemetic people in that palette. Exactly. So it why says would... you're not. How could you be so daft about what you are reading? All right, so listen, I got one more for you and I'm done. I got one more. Let me bring this one more out. But, I, wait, let him get this you... one more out, Jabari. Let him get this right, one right, more listen. out. We were talking about this papyrus right here. I right, just uh, uh, this is this is from a uh, online uh, pyramid text, right? E. A. Wallace Budge. It says the history of the creation of the gods and of the world, right? This is version eight. There's two versions. It says the book of the knowing of the evolutions of Ra. Ra. It says the overthrowing of Apap, which is Apap, I believe, is a Papus, right? It's the Hyksos king, right? No. Okay. Well, some people say that it is him. It no, says, no, 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 no. You don't understand I, what you're reading. Listen to me. Listen. A pep is a snake. Is is what? He's a snake, basically. Yes, but Apophis names himself after the snake. After. That's so what when I'm you're I wait, know. listen, wait, wait, wait. So when you're reading this, they're not referring to the king, they're referring to the snake. I know, I know. Okay. I'm just saying. So listen, it said the words of Nebuchadnezzar, which he spake, right? It says after he came into being. So basically, he comes into the world. He speaks and he comes into the world as a material or something physical. He says he forms matter. So Lewis says, after he had come into being, I am he who came into being in the form of Kepra, right? So it says, I was or became the creator of what came into being. The creator of what came into being all after my coming into being, he says, he says, many were the things which came into being. So the cycle, basically, of the evolution of Ra, basically, coming in the form of Kepra, explaining this, the, him forming matter, basically, the dung beetle. It says, coming for and, 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 and planting this lava in him and cycling that and repeating it, factoring and repeating, just repeating, cycling it. Okay, cool. Coming forth by the mouth. Not have it. I mean, it says where the kings, I mean, where things which came into being came forth from my mouth, not existed in, in uh, heaven yet, nor existed earth, not have been created. The things of the earth and creeping things in place that I raised them up from out of new, right? Primal mortal waters or whatever, from an inactive state or a state of inactive. It says, not found I a place I could stand, right? It says, wherein I worked a charm. With, Are you going to come to a point with this? I, or? I, I, I am. I'm coming right here. He says, "Where well, I worked the charm with my heart. I laid a foundation in my ma, and I not in my ma. Wait, where, where does it say? How is in my what? That's my ah, because in ah. my ma you would think means mother. That's not what that means. Right, my ah, right, and it's a man with a bird and a what? Uh, uh, a feather right there. It's a, it's a bird and right. What is that? And it says, uh, I, I, we're not going to go into all of it. Says, and I made attribute every, it says, I made attribute every. Brother G-Con, can I say something to you? 
I already know where you're going. You know that, right? Okay, so I want to go there. I'm at least four steps ahead of well, you. Let me go there. You, I don't think you know that yet. Well, let me go there. I made, I says, I was alone, or not had I spit in the form of shoe, not had I admitted tough nut, not existed another who worked with me. I, I made a foundation in my heart, right? And there came into being the multitude of things which came into being, the multitude of things which came into being. From out of the things which came into being of birth from out of the things which of birth, I even I had union. Watch this. I even I had union with my clenched hand. I joined myself in an embrace with my shadow and poured seed into my own mouth. My is now I, now the reason why I want to I want y'all to picture this. This brother is looking in the mirror. It's not a brother. Hold on. It don't have to be a brother, but I want y'all to, I'm, I'm going to get real St. Louis country grammar with y'all. Listen, the hold problem on, with St. Louis, Louis country let grammar let is finish. that you don't understand hold what on, you're let reading. Let me finish. Let me finish. Listen. Go ahead. It says, he clenched his hand. He was looking in the mirror and embracing himself. Jacking off. That's what it says. It says he looked in the mirror. Let's read it again, bro, if I'm lying. It says, the things which of their birth, I mean, it says, uh, my shadow says, with my hand, with my clenched hand, I joined, I embraced myself. We know what he was embracing, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if it was the left or the right, but he was embracing. It says, with my shadow. So he's looking at himself, right? He says, I pour seed into my mouth. So he jacked up by looking at himself into his mouth, right? I pour seed into my mouth, my own. I sent forth issue in the form of shoe. So he's at, so he said, I pulled forth seed into my own mouth. Moisture shot up into his mouth, basically. That Watch is that. not what that says. Look, look what it says. I sent forth issue in the form of shoe. I sent forth moisture in the form of tough nut. That is not what that says. You know, let me read it and then you can give the interpretation of what you say. Did it it's say. not interpretation. You're just re misreading the text. Right, cool, cool, but I'm looking at it. Look, the audience can see it, bro. Listen. That's why I know that the audience, if they're reading it, knows that what okay, you're reading well, is incorrect. Hold on, Jabari, because you're starting to act like it looked like the virus. Right? Let, him, let him read it, Jabari. Let him get it out. Now, Sonetta, let's be clear. He's been reading for a really long time. Right. Just let me just get this. Just let me just read the, the, the little bit of this. That's the rest of it. Just, please. Now, look. So he looks in the mirror. This brother get the jacking off. Oh, brother, my goodness. Now, he clenches his hand. Look in the mirror. He jacks off. He spits it in his mouth, it shoots in his mouth, shoots out more, and, and he spits it out. Now, I want to ask you this. If I went and I sat down before a doctor, whoever wrote this, would you say this is perverted right here? Because he didn't have to explain this in the way that he explained this. Okay. And this time and day, people will say oh, wait, it. Wait, is, wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't even try to explain. Let me Go do ahead. this. Let me do this. Let me do this. First of all, I want you to know that what you're doing is infantile, right? It's infantile. Because first of all, it is not a brother. It is not a brother. What you are describing is the first entity in the entire universe coming out of the primordial waters. There is nothing else except this entity. And this entity brings out of himself the rest of creation. That is what is happening. And the reason why you're laughing like you are is because you are in third grade and you're talking to a master. And that's really sad because what you are hearing, particularly because you have to understand when, what is a seed? What is a seed? Can you tell me what a seed is? The sperm that he spit in his mouth. Wait, 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 wait. What is a seed? Here's a seed right here. Let's look at it. It's going to be right Wait here. a minute. G Con, answer the question. What is a seed? It's right here. Sperm. What? So, you're not, your brother, this is very sad. It says it this right here. It's very sad. What is a seed? What is a seed? It's, it's, what is it? It's, here is sperm. Have you had an apple? But this is sperm right Have here. Have you eaten an apple, damn it? Come on. You're not answering the question. Yeah, yeah, Have you eaten an here. apple? That's the beside the point. This is sperm. So listen, listen to me. That first of all, he didn't spit a seed apple. He didn't spit a seed apple. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me. When you look at seed, do you see the the henanin, the penis? 
Where is it at? Care not is the word you're looking for. I see. I see when it says the penis right here. Just like, read. The, no, read the word I poured seed. Okay, it says care not. I pour seed, right? And again, when you look at the glyphs, what do you see? I see a uh, 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 I see some jumping out, jumping out like a head, like sperm. It's just jumping. It's like I don't know why you're saying, like, <laughs> look, brother, brother, you got lots of problems. It's a, it's a you got, lo here. you look, got lots of problems. Is, the though, seed, bro. listen to me, a seed, because I don't think G-Con has ever eaten an apple or a watermelon or anything. A seed is the very organic stuff that creates the universe. And so because you are a child reading a master text, you want to make this sound like this is a human. It is not a human. Who wrote it? How this is, no, this is not a human. This is who the Neb Etcher. The Neb Etcher, the Neb Etcher is the very beginning entity of the entire universe. So God came and he is, wait a minute, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he creates the entire world. Is there this is a man nothing else other than him. Is this a when man? When you continue, it is not a man. So it is not a man. wrote this right here. Yo, the Netta wrote this. Never Netta wrote this. No, no. But what do you mean it's a man that wrote it? I'm talking about in the story you're reading, this is not a man that they're referring to. He's telling the story, though. The Nebercher is telling the story. Well, hold on. The, right, the person who's writing. Time out, time out. Everybody, time out. Um, G consciousness. When he's talking about a seed, see, this is what Jabari's trying to get to. Is is he referring to a man? Is it the man that's eat the seed and spit it out? All, that's wait, what he asked. Hold on, Jabari. Wait a minute, son Edder. Wait a minute. You don't even understand the question you're asking. Hold on. I study this text. Listen. If he reads further down, you're going to see that men haven't even exist, don't even exist yet. This is not a man. It says it's nurture. Read further down, G-Con, and you're going, don't, don't show us your stuff now. No, I Read further hold on, down. Hold on, G-Con, G-Con, get back to that, get back to it, brother. Go back to, I didn't sit up there and then. G-Con, we need you to go back to the, um, to the text. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to go back to it. I didn't, I try to enlarge it. Hold on, let me, let me, hold on. I got my address. You want me to read the text for you? Cause you're not doing a good job. Hold on, no, I got it right here. Cause I got the glyphs right here. I just. Clearly. You need to remove that from the screen. That's your personal business. Don't do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, did, I somehow just, I try to enlarge it and go in and it erased it. Hold on, I not erased it, but it uh, moved on somewhere else. Do you want me to read you? You know, you know, I know this text, right? Hey, I recite you, sections of this text in the original language. I uh, evidently you don't know it. <laughs> no, I agree. I'm, I'm just playing with you. Yeah, I believe you know it. But uh, uh, it's the glyph there that I'm tripping off of, though. You see that glyph there? No, we don't see nothing yet. Hold on. Let me let me put it down. Go to the page. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm interested in um, you continuing to read like Jabari said. Man is not even here yet. No. Men and women come from the tears. No, it's not. It's not that man ain't here yet. No, man is not there yet. Keep hold reading. On, hold, on. hold on. It's not that man is not here yet. The point is that I'm making to you is the the writer who's writing this. Who is writing this? Who wrote this? No, that's not the point you're making. That's no, not I, the point. Hold on, hold on, Stop I, it. No, hold the on, point I, you are trying to make is that this divine entity is doing something bizarre by taking seed into his mouth. That's, a, that's the point you're trying to make. Uh, uh, Dubois, but who, the reality is, the reality is you're not talking. If it was a man doing it, I would agree to you that that would be strange. Who's but writing about a man? Who's so, writing? Hold on. Not a man. So let me ask you, G. Khan, is it a man? You say it's a man? Uh, I'm saying that this is a man that is writing. It's not. No, that's no, not. No, we know it's a man Stop writing it, it, but I'm saying, Stop is it. it a man that's taking the seed into oh his mouth? Goodness. No, 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 no. It's a, it's, it's, it's a man explaining a, a deity taking seed into his mouth. Right, but is the deity a man? That's what we ask The you. deity that we see is not a man, but it's a man explaining a deity taking seed into his mouth. This ain't. This ain't I don't. Brother, hold up. Hold up, G. Constance. <laughs> hold on, man. Is it. 
a man, yes or no, you that try, you, backed off. You tried to say it was a brother in looking in the mirror. Hold on, Jamari. Hold right. on. Right. This it, is what it, I it, do, Jamari. This is what I do. Because, see, when you get him to be on record saying this, then you can cut him when you go on. So, G Con, I'm asking you, is this a man ejaculating sperm into his mouth? Is this a man? This is not a man. This is a deity that's doing this. Right? Okay. What you are talking about now, is- it, it, Now, now, wait, now. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Let me explain, because you asked, you said right, so let me explain. What you're looking at is the only being in existence. This is at the beginning of time. By the way, most historians say that this is the origin of the, uh, the story in Genesis. Most historians say that now. So what I want you to understand is you are not looking at a human. If we were talking about a human, then it would be unusual. It would be strange. It but you have to understand that seed. Have you ever eaten an apple? Well, it is a human, though. Have you ever eaten? It is not a human. Hold on. It, well, no, what I mean by it's a human, it is a human explaining something about Oh, something. my goodness. Hold on. Have you ever eaten an apple? Hold on. This is what I'm trying to show you. Have you ever eaten an apple? I've uh, plenty of apples, definitely. So then, you, so then you've had seed in your mouth, brother. But this is not an apple right here, though. So, so what is it an apple there? Hold on, let me show you what it's saying. It's saying that this, I'm going to show you the glyph. I'm trying to hurry and go back to it so I can show you the glyph, because the glyph is a penis and it's a no, man. No, you are incorrect. I'm going to show you the penis right here. It no, says, because you, I already asked you to show us the glyph for the word seed. Watch this. It says this man clenched his clenched his private part and jacked off in his mouth. And the glitch right there, and the glyph right there, and you're gonna say it ain't. It's not charging. Hold on, I'm gonna uh, I'm trying to pull it up right now. Can I listen? You you this is going on for a long time. Oh, oh yeah. Let me let me make a comment. Because you 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 read for a long time, you didn't understand what you read, and now you're you're doing something kind of strange. I don't know what, what you're doing exactly. But let me let me show you something. We are talking about at this time, at this time the very creation of the entire universe. And what the people who wrote that are trying to explain is how one entity comes out of, not when there was nothing, but when there was no thing. And that one entity creates the rest of creation. And so obviously, if you don't know what a seed is, I know you know what seed is. Seed is the very essence of the universe of whatever entity in microcosm. That's what they're trying to say. And it's so strange to me that Christians and Hebrews like to try to make it sound like the comedic text, like comedic philosophy is in some ways homosexual. We believe in a tradition in which every deity, every male deity has a female complement. Not this one. He we did. believe, yes, that's there too. You have you don't know how to read the text. Hold on, G. Hold on, G. So you gotta let him go. What, you tell so him. that is what we believe. That's this is the teach for right quick. This is the this is the divine. This is the chief divine complement. The chief divine triad in Kemet. On the left, you are seeing Heru. On the middle, you are seeing a statue of the father Asar. And in the on the right, you are seeing Aset. As. You can render it Aset as well. You, when, when the comedic people describe any creation, you will see male, female, offspring. And I, it really boggles my mind that Christians who are infantile and confused want to insult the comedic tradition like it's homosexual when it, it, it's so bizarre. Because this is how you do creation. Two men and a bird. You ever hear the concept, don't, that men in, in, in glass houses shouldn't throw stones? So which is, which to you, dear brother, must be homosexual? Which to you must be bestiality, dear brother? Because I want you to understand that the comedic tradition deals with male and female complements. Your tradition is the one that erased the female. And then you have the nerve to sit here, not reading a text that you clearly do not understand, reading glyphs that you've never read before, and you're trying to mar a practitioner of comedic spirituality with homosexuality. When in actuality, in your tradition, it, uh, that's what we must be seeing. 
I don't understand why you would even try to do that. Hey, you know what's okay? So now, now, hold on, hold on. Now, now, G Con, you got the text up again. I would like for you to take off from where you left off when you was reading about the seed and okay. then continue to go down so we okay. can see if that's a man. Okay, so it says, I found a foundation in Ma'at, right? And I made attribute every, what is that? Every- I made every attribute. I made, uh, I made every attribute, attribute every I was alone. For not I have spit. Now notice he said he was alone. I'm gonna show you. He I, is alone. He's alone. So now he just told y'all, he just told the world that this man had union with it a woman. It is not a man. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. First of all, he said it's not a man, but he has a bird though. The he glyph, what? The glyph has a bird and he's imaged as a man. So second what is- talk, What? Hold what on, are you hold looking on. at? Let's let me finish, bro. Look at the glyph. Thank but you let him finish, Jabari, Jabari okay, let him finish. Sure. So look, you can explain it, Jamari. So look, he says, I was alone. Now he just told John, man, woman, and what's called, but it says I was alone. It says he jacked off and spit in his mouth and then spit out the other deities. That's basically what it's saying. Look what it says. Keep reading. Keep I reading. Was alone, keep reading so I can explain it to you. No, it, keep reading, G Kong. Keep reading. Look, it says, but now I, I spit, right? In the form of shoe, not it says. Not how I admit, admitted Tefna not existed another who worked with me. I made a foundation in my heart, right? Where's the part I want to talk about, about the seed, though? What was that at? It's up here. No, you passed the seed. We going down. This brother is, I'm, this is like childish because he's trying to look for penises. And right glitter. there, right there, right there. Come on, where you going? Okay, oh, right. come on, G. Khan, you got to keep reading. Okay, <laughs> right, right there, right here. I don't see seed there. It's on the next page. Go back up. Go back up. On the next, there, right up here. There, go right there. Ain't no seed right there. Yes, it is. No, it's, it's further right down. Keep reading. Oh, okay. All right. It's further down. Go down. That boy spit. And, there and it is. Right, now, now, I'm trying to monitor these glyphs. Now, look. It says, with my clenched hand, right, I join myself in a brace. Is there a phallus in here somewhere? Is there a phallus? There's this one there. Okay, so what is he doing? He's jacking off, right? No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. First of all, you have to understand that they are not talking about a man. And if you are going to create, semen is part of creation. The, the concept of semen. This is not a man. This is not a human being. And the rest of the universe comes from seed. Now... And when you look at the word seed, care not, look at the word. Now notice, hold on, there's a problem with this. And I'm gonna show you why. Let me explain it real quick. Now. Why don't you keep reading instead of now, giving now, us a misunderstanding? No, G-Con, G-Con, we want you to keep reading so you can get an understanding, that's it. Okay, Just cool. read another one, keep reading, go ahead. With my shadow, I poured seed into my mouth. This nigga wasn't with no woman. My own. Are you sure he wasn't with a woman? Where does it say he was with a woman? It says the glyph. If, he, if he's with a woman, why? Look he, at the glyphs. So, listen, I'm trying to teach you. Could you please? Right, I have read this text right, thousands ahead. of times. Look at the glyphs. I go see. further up. Okay. Go up again. All right. What? When you see Kaibit Ah, what do you see? Where's Kaibit Ah at? Right here. Where is it at? Kaibit Ah. Right here, my clenched hand. I want hand. you to keep reading and look at the glyphs. Is it Kaiba out my clenched hand? Is that keep it? Reading. Is that it right does, there? By the way, you have to know he does this with the shadow, right? Oh, Kaiba, my shadow. Now, yeah. where's 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 a woman here? In keep glyphs? reading. It says. I want you to look at the glyphs. Keep Kaiba, reading. Ah, it says my shadow. Yes, keep reading. It says I poured seed into my mouth. Yes, it does say that. I don't know why you keep saying the same thing. <laughs> it says my uh, what listen, do you want me to read? Listen, G conscious, G conscious. If you want me to read on the screen, yes, it says I poured seed into my mouth. Keep so, reading. So, uh, listen to me. Wait a minute. You have to keep reading it okay, so you understand the text. You are acting like a listen, you're acting like Beavis and Butthead hearing the word butt and laughing. That's what you're doing. Right, read read the text so you understand it. Read, brother. Come on, read, G Con. Keep reading. My shadow, I pour seed into my own mouth. It says, I sent forth issue in the form of shoe, 
I sent forth moisture in the form of Tefnut, Seth, my father. Do you see the woman? Where's the woman at? Well, I see the woman with Tefnut. Yeah. You're going to see a bunch of them. But the Keep woman going. Tefnut came after, the woman came after this going. Boy. Yes, because Nebuchadnezzar is only on, one day. On, Jabari, stop for a minute. Tefnut comes after, that seed of the woman comes after. That man, that uh, that uh, the uh, the uh, the vector comes. So what he does is he jacks up in his mouth. Oh my goodness! It says it there, bro. No, you keep saying he jacked up in his mouth when it's not a man. Why does it have a bird? Then it's in the master. It's, it's, what it's, bird? What bird? The bird. The, the bird. Uh, <laughs> what? What do you show me? What you're looking at? Watch this. Look what it says. All right, look. It says in the form of. It says, in the form of, uh, of Tefna, Seth, my father. Who is my father here? You don't understand anything that you're reading. Who is my father, though, here? You do not understand anything that you're reading. Sinatta, who's you just, my father right this is, this is, he's doing being the black beavis and butthead. He sees a penis and he sees a person. He goes, ha, 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 ha. You don't, why don't you read the text? I am reading. Brother, the people that wrote this text, controlled a region for 3,000 years. These were Africans that created, that gave the world civilization. And all you are doing is laughing at a penis because you are acting like a child. Read Sinatta. the text that your ancestors created that you can return to hey, their Sinatta. greatness I'm, instead I'm, of I'm, being a black hey, beavis and butthead. Sinatta, you know what happened in this text here? I'm gonna tell you what happened. No, no, G Con, G Con. Keep All reading. we want you to do is keep reading, brother. Okay, okay, why are, why y'all you keep stopping? Just read it, and then you can go ahead and make your point. Drive your point forth, home. I, I, I sent forth issue in the form of shoe. I sent forth moisture in the form of Tefnut, said my father. Knew they make me to be weak. My eye behind them because of double periods they proceeded. Meaning the sun and the moon, basically. The eye and then the moon, basically. That's dealing with the sun and the moon. Watch this. I'm going to show you why. It says, from me after I became from God. One God, three. So he says, from God, one God, three. To about the natures. That is from out of myself. So he made polarities. And after brother, brother, brother. What a... You are interpreting the text that you don't understand. Read the text so you can get a better understanding. All right, so, and after that was I polarities. Now it's just, what? Uh, he said, listen, that's polarity. Read. He says, this is, he says, that is from out of myself. And after I came into being in earth, this were raised up. Therefore, shoot and Tefnut in the inner watery mass wherein they were. Brought they to me, my eye, right? In their train, after therefore I had united my members. Now, really, is this dealing with the creating of the atmosphere, the plants, and the earth, and all Brother, that? No. What Keep reading. Uh, Sinead, you're you're trying me. to interpret something and you don't even know what you're Sinead, reading. Sinead, ah. get, Sinead, get with me privately, brother. Oh, please. <laughs> no, no, no. Hold up. Hey, hey, G Khan, let me ask you a question. Wait okay. a minute. Before you ask the question, let him read the next sentence, Sinead. All right, go read the next sentence. Go ahead. I wept over them and came into being men and women. There is where men and women are. Right, we understand that. There but are no men and women before no, no, this time. No, 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 no. This is what I'm showing you. Listen. Whoever wrote this story, Egyptians was great people. Great uh. people. So whoever wrote this story, Sinatra, was a homosexual. I'm not saying all Egyptians was, but who now, wrote this? Now, can I ask you this? They was gay. Now, wait a minute. Can I ask you this? First of all, what does it mean to be a homosexual? Well, you know what? I wouldn't even say. I'll what tell you, Jabari. Mean? A man and a man has to be together, or woman and woman. There's only one being in the entire universe. And it's, first of all, it's not a man. Right. And second of all, they're not two men. Well, I'm going to say perversion. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, gonna because you see perversions, right? Right. right. And I'm going to tell you why it's perverted. Because first of all, Sonetta, listen. What man... It's what not man, a man! Hey, it says father in the text. It says father in the text. No, you misread that too. All right, so listen. This guy got, this fella here got a bird, like me and you. 
He got a what? A beard, like me and you. A beard. This fella got a beard. They got a strange accent, brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know what he was saying. I kept asking you, what are you talking about a bird? Where's the bird? He meant I beard. Oh, beard. Man. Oh, beard. <laughs> but anyways, I'm done with this thing, brother. Anything y'all want to No, add? but look, look, I want you to really look at this creation story. Oh, my goodness. When he said he created man and woman from a seed, wouldn't that be more, shouldn't that give you more of an understanding than the Christian story? When when Jesus, when I mean, when your God is talking about he he created a woman from a man's rib? Well, it's really, it's really something similar. Because what's happening is, is he's coming still from the man and the rib is basically- Econ, the, Econ it's not similar. One on. story was plagiarized by no, the no, other. No, no, Jabari, hold on, no, listen. This creation story has been perverted. This oh. Now, the, if you look at the creation story, still in this story, this person existed alone, right? By himself. Then he created from himself the, the woman. That's what he created from himself, the woman, because it says that here, right? Male and female, right? Now, here's the thing that I have with this text right here. And why you can't make a comparison with this with the uh, New Testament? I mean, with the uh, uh, the Genesis, because Genesis basically tells you that a creator made male and female without him jacking off into his own mouth. Oh, now, stop I, it! I, hold on. Now listen. I will say this. It says he clenched his hand and jacked off in his own mouth. Whoever wrote this was a perv. And I will say this. The Genesis does not teach that. It doesn't teach that God committed a perverted act in order to bring about creation or even man. Whoever wrote this, if you took this before a doctor or a psychologist, he's going to say somebody who wrote this did this <laughs> perversion. I don't care what nobody said. This is perversion right here. Okay, so let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. And guess what? Yeah, that's, that's, what I, that's why men is trying to jack off in women's mouth today and jacking off also. Yeah, uh, brother, brother, your your uh, parenthetical stuff is not based on any knowledge whatsoever. All right, unshare um, your screen. Uh, let's, let's let Jabari let me, talk, let me, and then me, we're going to open up the phone lines. Let the people get a couple of questions. Let me just say this really quickly. You want to make fun of a text written by Africans who control the world. That's what you want to do, right? But the, I, I find that so, I find it hilarious because this is where your text goes. This is where the text that you are bigging up goes. This is where the text that your enslavers gave you goes. Women are property. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife or his male slave, his female slave, his ox, his donkey, or anything which belongs to your neighbor. That's in Exodus and Deuteronomy. Women are property. For a man not need to cover his head. This is in 1 Corinthians. For a man not need to cover his head, in so far much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman is of the man. Neither was the man created for woman for the woman, but the woman for the man. Women are subject to men. They are less than men in your biblical narrative. Let's go further. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply, multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thou desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So women actually have pain and agony in, in their conception. Why? Because they are secondary to men. Let's go further. Women have no voice. Men should pray, but women should adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold. By the way, sisters, if you're wearing braided hair or gold or pearls, this means that you are doing something that is against the God that you worship in that book that has such uh, bizarre things. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I not suffer a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. In other words, one of the reasons why women have pain, the pain of childbearing, is because Eve was the one that was um, deceived by the snake. 
And we should also understand here that we are saying again that women should only be silent because men are form are our primary. Women are uh, it's even hard to say they're secondary. Let's go further. And a daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father and shall be burnt with fire. Let's go even further in Deuteronomy. This clarifies this, I think. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. This is if a woman, by the way, let me tell you what says be, uh, 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 before this. If a woman is caught not being a virgin when she's married to her father, married to her, her husband, then she shall be brought out to the door of her father's house and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die because she has wrought folly in Israel to pay the whore in her father's house. Shall so thou put evil away from among you. So you should also understand that your Bible says that if a woman is not a virgin when she's married, she should be killed by the men of her city because she played the whore. This is the text that you are seeing and you wanna make fun of a glyph that looks like a penis and a deity, a deity who exists in the world by himself and spits forward seed. Brother, you live in a glass mansion and you got a whole bag of stones that you're throwing around. Let's continue. Women should be married to their rapists. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed and lay hold on her and lie with her, and they be found, by the way, this is interesting, this is only if they get caught, by the way. Then the man that lay with her shall give on to the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away for all his days. This means that if you are raped by a man, then the rapist should pay your father 50 shekels, and then he owns you. You are his wife. Oh, and and you, we already told you that women are the ownership of men. Brother, I could do this all day long. Your text has a real problem. And it, it's so bizarre to me that you want to say that what you're seeing is homosexuality when there's only one entity exists in the entire universe at the time. How could it be homosexuality? And second of all, in Kemet, every god has a goddess. Every inter has an in, interet. This is a tradition that has divine feminine and divine masculine. And in fact, sometimes the divine feminine is more powerful than the divine masculine. That's the tradition of ancient Africa. That's the tradition of ancient Africa. Why I'm gonna tell you, you're not gonna find a divine woman in the entire biblical text. There is no female God in your text. And you have the nerve to try to say that Kemet is homosexual? Why are you so confused that you would speak ill of your ancestors for the text that your enslaver gave you? Brother, you took the shackles off your legs, off your wrist, and it is now on your soul. Free yourself, brother. Stop being infantile and looking for penises and playing yourself. What you should be doing is you should be understanding how Africans in power did it and stop following behind your enslaver. He gave you that text. No one else gave you that text, a text which he pilfered and mistranslated and lied about so that he could take your stuff and mess it up and then call it his. All right, we wanna open up the phone lines for some questions. We're gonna take a couple of callers. Um, let's open up these phone lines, y'all. Man, I want to thank you, Brother G. Khan. Uh, thank you, Brother Jabari. I think this was definitely part one of a strong series here. And uh, G. Khan, I got to let you know, you, you got beat up here on this last topic. You was doing so good, brother, before you brought this up. <laughs> you brought this up, and I think I think what happened is you following Tazoriak in them with this, because that's what they tried to do. And you know they don't know a damn thing when it comes to the comedic science. Homosexuality, g -Con, is when you got two men or two women having a sexual pleasures with each other. If it's one deity creating a universe, of course you create with the seed. If you have a watermelon seed, you create the seed. You create the watermelon. If you got any kind of fruit on the planet, this is why we pose to eat fruits with seeds. By the way, the other part he didn't read, Sonetta, it What's even says his hand, he makes his hand as his wife. 
Oh, oh. Even, even when there is one deity, he still has to mention a divine Where feminine. Say that though. Be uh, well, I, I could show it to you where it is. It I'm not going to go through it again. It's not in this text. Uh, that's because that's one translation, brother. I have read at least seven translations. You got to show them, Jabari, because that's a crazy cut right there. I'm telling you that. Hold on, there's two texts here. There's A and A version and, and two versions. By the way, do you even know where that text comes from? Do you know where it is? Where is it? Where is it at? See, I, you, listen, I traveled all the way to London to see it. Right. What you were reading is written on what is called Memphite theology, but it's actually the Shabaka stone. That's what you're reading. And that's even worse, though, because it's it's in stone, <laughs> and this brother jacking off on stone. Yeah, I guess that's the problem you had, because you've never jacked off before. But, you know, I'll tell you that the funny thing the funny thing is that this is not a man. See, that's why your brain is so broken here, brother. It is a man. It's not a man. Listen. It is a man that wrote this just talking about... Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. First of all, you don't know if a man wrote it. It could be a woman that wrote it. But because you're so backward reading the Bible, you assume that a man wrote it. Well, it well, How well, do you know a woman didn't write it? So, uh, so, so hold on. If a woman wrote it, why is she writing about a man jacking off in his own... It's life? not a man. You know what, brother? You are obtuse. Why is she writing about a God jacking You are off obtuse. There's why? only one being in the universe. Men don't come till late. Men and women don't come till later. Why is they using the analogy of a netcher jacking off in their mouth though? This this deity is called the Nebetcher. So do a, do a, do the Nebetcher. He's above. He is the he is the first of first. Yeah, the you are reading is called the Zeptepi. It's called the first of it's the first time. Yeah, the first and time I want time. you to understand that semen is seed. And so they're using an analogy. This is symbolism. This isn't actually a history book. Why would you use that analogy or that symbolism? Like because that? semen is a seed. Semen is seed. I wouldn't use that symbolism like that. Well, That's you wouldn't use it because you're still confused and locked to a book that enslaves you. That's why you wouldn't use it. But you should use, Brother G Con, you should use whatever Africans used when they were on the top of the world. But you would rather, wait a minute, you would rather use a book that was given to you when you were on the bottom of the world. That's where you'll stay. Jabari, Jabari, listen, listen, Jabari, listen. I, I, first of all, I, a lot of West Africans never even had this text right here. You know what does what that mean? mean? So this date text. What does that mean? A lot of West Africans didn't have this. What text. I'm saying is this is, is that every, every African didn't believe in what they seen with this right here. They didn't brother, even write like this. Brother, brother, this is not about belief. This is one set. Wait, Sonetta's trying to get attention. You're you're muted, Sonetta. All right, Jabari, stop for a minute. Everybody, peace of black power family. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yo, yo, what's going on? I'm I'm Ryan Smith. I'm calling in from Jersey, North, North New Jersey. All right, what's on your mind? What kind of questions you got for the brothers? Hey, so I've been, I've been watching this for a minute, and I'm, and I'm over here cooking, and and I, and I got to say, Jabari is just by far winning this, and, and I feel like G conscious is hold not on, really Hold on, hold on for one minute. Hold on, hold on. Let these bikes go by, man. Y'all hear the bikes? Yeah, this shit is crazy. We heard, yeah, them. we heard them. All right, go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like G consciousness is not really adding a, a, a historical perspective to this. You know what I'm saying? Like Kemet is much older, and, and at the same time, is there's also a new civilization. So, so my question for Jabari is like, how do you like? I'm mean, not, not even a how. What do you really want to get across to, to G consciousness? I mean, after after all these points that you're saying, I mean, it almost seems like like frivolous and trivial at this point. But what do, what do you really want to get across to this brother? Because I mean, it, it's it's a build at the end of the day. So overall, what would you want to say to him? I'm going to say this in 15 seconds. There are three things I want to get across to him. First of all, regardless of whether you think it's funny or not, it's yours. It's an African text. And I suggest that you follow your ancestors instead of following someone who attempted to enslave you and subjugate you, which is what you're actually doing. The second thing I want you to do is to actually learn more about African traditions so that you're not superimposing stuff that you heard elsewhere on top of it to try to understand right. it. Just read the text and read the history. Right. And the third thing I want you to understand is it is critically important for you to understand that in all African traditions, you're going to see the divine female and the divine male. That's how the world existed until the European tried to get in control and the Tom who erased the woman. And then you're bigging it up now and making fun like like a black beavis and butthead. I don't understand why you're doing that. Those are the three things that I want him to get. 
You got any questions? Now, now if I can, I would. Yeah, I, w- I would like to ask a uh, G kind of question as well. So, so I mean, give, given everything, and this and this topic might, might, I mean, I mean, this question might be a little off ball, but even still, like given given Christianity's history and overall sort of cultural impact on the black community and, and, and Africans just period here in the West, because we know, you know, black is a social construct. So if we, if we go that deep and we know the church history and its investment in the institution of slavery here in the West, how do you, as a, as a black man in America, sort of reconcile that and call yourself a Christian in 2020, given our history given our knowledge of archaeological records, and I'm, and I'm a student here at, at Rutgers North. I study anthropology as my minor. My major is criminal justice, so I take this very seriously, and I'm a, and I'm a black man myself, so how do, you, how do you reconcile that on a daily basis? Pick up this Bible. Like Jabari said, a, a white man gave you that. This is very new to us. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're known to be here since, what, like two, two 200,000 years old? That's the oldest African skeleton we got, and this is Year zero, according to the Roman calendar, like how do you how do you reconcile all of that? Right. You know so, so, so basically, everything. If if you want to use that argument, that argument is it doesn't make any sense because the majority of stuff that you have <laughs> that you're being taught or who you've been educated by is Europeans. So then you what you'll do is you, oh, okay, you'll be throwing basically uh, tough stones on top of yourself or digging a ditch for yourself because even when it comes to us, your archaeology, like he said. You have to hire people just to be in these certain areas and get these certain permits. You don't control any of those things. You don't have no type yes. of office. so 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 hold on. So what I'm saying is this is is that it's the same same thing. Like when you look at Africa, when you look at Africa, everybody didn't believe this story right here. This is just one story among. Okay. Hold on, Let, well, come on, you know already. Listen, this I didn't is, say anything. I'm just hold on. This is one story among a group of people, right? And this story that we see begin to be a, the the uh, of the cosmology of a civilization that was pressed on them. Every oh. African of the continent didn't believe this story right here. And so when you look at a person that can culturally say, "Then listen, if if I if I if I want to adapt to that, I can adapt to that." Out of all the fifty countries that's in uh, uh, that's in Africa, uh, 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 why is this brother adapting to Kemet? Because he chose to do so. So if I choose to say I want to adapt, right. to Kemet, then it's uh, uh, that, that conveys a powerful message unto me, I'm, I'm free to do so. But let me say, you're of course free to be so, to keep your change. Okay. But I want you to understand that. Can I just say one rebuttal before before I get off really briefly? Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. You know, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but but I just want to say one thing. So 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 one thing that I heard you say, Decon, was that the people that I'm studying under are are largely are largely Europeans, and so. I can agree slightly to that in that, you know, the, the way that we learn traditionally is a, is a, is a European model, right? And, and, and Paulo Freire, you know, critiques this, and he's a, and he's a European scholar, excuse me, not, not a, a Brazilian scholar who critiques, you know, our, our sort of educational model. So, so that's, that's a scholar that you can look up who's not European, right? We have, we have Michael Gomez, who's, who's not European, who studies how uh, African people made their transition into, into blackness in, in the West. That, that's in his book, Exchanging Our Country Marks. That's a, that's a non-European as well. Uh, a Rutgers scholar, Dr. Ivan Van Sertimer. He was here as well. I mean, that's that's prior to me. I'm 21 years old. I know about him. So, I mean, I, I really just feel like you didn't even get to the heart of my question as well. It's like, how do you reconcile church history and their investment within the destruction of African people? And, and I mean, your belief today as a, as a Christian, I mean, like, like Jabari said prior, all of these beliefs were codified. The Nicene Council, all, all of these things which are which are very, very late according to African history. So how do you reconcile that? I mean, like, just just deal with that. And right. then, like, I, I don't, I'm not even trying to go deep with it. These are, these are real oh, points. Oh, and these oh, are scholars that you can look at. These are facts. Brother, 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 stop for a minute. I'm 39. Okay. Years, I'll be 39 in September, bro. I used to be a blood in California. I've been in these streets for a long time. And I'm, I'm going to say this. Just because something is first, or you say that it's older, it could be an old lie. It doesn't mean that it's the truth. So I'm not saying that all of it was the, was a was a lie, but if my mom was lying back then, and then she told me them stories, I'd be lying today. So what you're saying logically, all that that's bad philosophy. So just because a white man come or an African come, they both can teach you something that is false, and you can carry that tradition. So what he said, what what Du Bois said was this. Du Bois says, well, you should. 
deal with what your ancestors dealt with. Well, if my ancestors, part of my ancestors dealt with homosexuality, should I deal with that? So what is he saying? So lot he so it's bad philosophy what you're saying, bro. But next call. Let me say two things really quick. All right, thank you, brother. I gotta go. I'm gonna get thank the next you, caller. Brother. Let me say two things very quick. Appreciate you, homie. I'm out. All right. Thank you. Thank go you. Go ahead, Jabari. First of all, I think we have to recognize that he is really caught up on homosexuality when it does not exist in that text. And the problem with women in the in the biblical narrative, I, I just I read you so many quotes. I could read you more. The biblical narrative has problems with women. And the other thing that I want you to really understand, brother, is that Hello? these stories that you were given were taken from an African narrative and reformatted according to their own social understanding. And now you are arguing against those people that are your ancestors. And I, I want you to also understand that African didn't believe what you just read. It was a, a philosophical description of the beginning of the universe. You and I already acknowledge that Kemet has at least eight stories. So what does that mean? See, you even have put this in the concept of belief because that's the chain that is around your neck, brother. All right, Jabari, have you ever, um, of course I know you did, but have you ever heard Dr. Wade Nobles break down the sheepdog story? <laughs> Would this be equivalent to the sheepdog? <laughs> huh, Jabari? Because this, a um, hey, 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 G Con, you ever heard of the sheepdog story? Uh, no. no. Okay, I ain't gonna say it. I'm if, he just... heard, if he hasn't heard of Tony Browder, he hadn't heard of J Wade Nobles. Oh, sheepdog man. Story. Peace and Black Power family. What's your name and where you call it from? Frederick Chicago. What's your name, What's brother? Up? Frederick, what? Uh, Cedric from Chicago. All right, what's on your mind, Cedric? Yeah, I want to ask the brother a question, and, and it's funny. It's, it's a simple episode of Good Time, right? Who, who you, you want to ask? Who you want to ask? Uh, they were talking about Black Jesus. Yeah, who you who you bringing your question to? Uh, the uh, the, the uh, G. G. I've got okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, he had a white man sitting in there praying to him like he was God. So a young son came in and said, look, mama, this day in the Bible you've been reading all them years that God black. Now, she saw him of putting that black man on the wall. She said that, no, he's white. She said, look, mama, he got blonde, he got blonde, blonde uh, he, you know, basically he, he looks black. But she kept that white man in blue eyes. And I'm with the father. How could you roll with the same people that race and beat you, teach you? It makes no sense. And I want to ask the brother, well, you know, the same thing the other brothers. Like, how could you even still worship with some type of people? All right. And that's it. That's Thank it, you. brother. I'm done. Thank you, brother. Do you want to respond, G-Con? Yeah, so basically, um, what he what he just did, like, for instance, like, anybody could take some literature, right? And in the literature, they could take it and, and try to translate it to where they want it to be. And then um, and then not doing what's actually in the literature. You know what I'm saying? So if I look at the literature, what it's conveying is it's conveying a powerful message, but just because somebody get to it and use it for misinformation, then that happens in life. People always take uh, uh, things that convey good things and try to misuse it for misinformation, I'll try to use it to be, be a destructive force towards others. So I look at it conveying a powerful message and that's why I subscribe to it. Now, if it's certain things that's in Kemet that is powerful, I subscribe to that. Like uh, I, I'll say that's a powerful message right there. That's a powerful proverb. So uh, I'm not rejecting African people. What I am rejecting is African people who was controlling native Africans and pushing this type of uh, uh, um, this type of uh, uh, strong delusion on Native Africans and, and, oh and it got us fighting and separating, dividing amongst each other. Hey, G Khan, let me I ask you a question. Hold okay. on, Jabari. Hold Go ahead. On. I'm sorry. Uh, G Khan, let me ask you a question. Um, when people pass away, where do they go? Uh, when people pass away, uh, according to your Bible and your scriptures. They go to what you call an afterlife. They go to either a place of uh, uh, peace, eternal, uh, eternal uh, peace or blessings, and the place of, or place of uh, tor tor torment. Where is that at? Do you know? 
Uh, you have that in um, Revelation. No, no, I'm saying where's the place at? Like, where do they go? Um, mainly they'll call it the either the underworld or either hell, or basically. And, and where's that at? Where's hell? They'll say it's like in Middle Earth. Or no, I want to know what you say. What do you say? Well, the Bible says Middle Earth. It says it's Middle Earth. In the middle of the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question. Him it says it's in it's Amduat, the underworld. Okay, so let me continue. So, um, how old is the Bible, if you don't mind me asking? And do you agree that people all right, don't even ask how old is it? Was man here before the Bible? Yes. About how many years? Just uh, your assumption about how many years was man here? Before the Bible. Thousands of years, probably thousands of years before the Bible. So when man was dying a thousand years before the Bible, where did they go? Because remember, there's no concept of, of hell and all that yet. Well, so the, where did they go? Well, actually, the concept is there. The concept that we see it is there is among other nations. When you look at around 200, over 200 cultures talk about a, a afterlife that deals no, with- No, 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 brother. We ain't talking about the other cultures. We talking about your Bible. Right, and so, so, so so what I'm saying is, where did man and woman go when they died a thousand years before, ten thousand years before there was a Bible in existence? They would have went. Where to did a, they go? If the person was wicked. They would have went to a place where evil, were prison, right? like in the literal world, like in the real world. If you're doing wickedness, you're going to jail. Brother, before you said that you're gonna go to the middle of the earth or something, to hell or something, brother. No, I'm saying it, it'd be just like uh, in, a, in 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 other words, these laws exist in duality. If you if there's a if there's good and evil exist in the afterlife or that or to be beyond the spirit beyond the material world, according to Kemet and also the biblical text and other cultures. So when we say a person, the ancients believe that a person is it goes either to a state of torment. Or either a state of to continue on and to be to be divine. I don't understand what you're saying because earlier you said that they will go to the middle of the world. So when you when I said when they die, where do they go? You said it, they will go like to the middle of the world or something like that, where hell is, right? Right. right. So now I'm saying the men that was here thousands and countless thousands of years before there was a Bible. Remember, there's no concept of heaven and hell because there's no Bible yet. This is what I'm saying. There's no Jesus story. There's no um, Exodus story. None of this stuff exists. But so what I'm asking you, hold on. What I'm asking you is, the men that been dying, where did they go? The tradition still carries down. In other words, the story that we got, that, that, that we see of heaven and hell. No, brother. No, sir. Okay, you so see, you know what you're supposed to say, G-Con? And, and see, we always like to think that we know everything. The best answer you could have gave is, brother, I don't know. I never died. I never died and came back. I, I can't tell you where they go, brother. I, I really don't know, but I can tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says this, but I don't know. That's the best answer you could give me, brother. But, I'm telling you what but when we try to explain it, g -Con, we end up sounding crazy and foolish, brother. You you get my point? Well, well no, nah, not really because if you look at the ancient cultures, and he knows it, Jabari knows it, even in Kemet. Let's use Kemet, for example, because they pre-existed before Israelite even existed. Now, when you look at Kemet, Kemet has a story about the Amduat, the underworld. No, they no, 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 G-Con, I got you. Watch this right quick. Watch this right quick. Brother Jabari, I'm coming to you. Yes. <laughs> Have the Black nation existed before Kemet? Came yeah, of, into course. Power. of course, black people existed possibly for millions of years. Before. Okay, now according to ancient Kemet, when black people died, where did they go? According to the teachings of Kemet. There are several different descriptions that occur. Because see, you know the difference- Just try to make it short, because I want to go to the next I'm question. I'm gonna just do it really short. The, one of the differences between the way that g -Con is gonna describe it and the way I'm gonna describe it is this. A ancient Africans are talking about symbolism. So they weren't saying this is exactly what will happen. They gave mm -hmm. you an understanding of their ideology around it, but they never would have said this is exactly a history. It's it's more philosophy in this sense than it is a literal narrative. No, they okay. So now, hold up, G. 
So now, before ancient Kemet existed, we already know men and women been here countless thousands of years before the power of, of the great Kemet came into a being. Now, right. before this story, where was man and woman going then? Before the story of Kemet, because there's no that, concept of the underworlds yet, unless they got it from Ethiopia. Yeah, I think that even before Kemet, you will see that after Because our story is so deep, G Continent. Yeah, We're I, trying to get you to love your ancestors, crazy. brother, to love where they come from. So explain that, Jabari. Like, where, did, gonna, where would we go before Kemet? You hold gonna, on, before Kemet, you're going to see Africans burying their dead with prized objects. It seems like Africans for a very long period of time, long before Kemet, but uh, argued that there was an afterlife. In fact, the concept of the afterlife is African. It, the Africans gave that to the rest of the world. So I can't tell you exactly what they believed because there were no texts. Right, they, CG? That's but, what I'm talking about, brother. Hold on, well, hold on, because I, because I, I, I kind of study under one of these brothers this real kind of sharp, which is my brother Rob Bourne. You know what I'm saying? Because I listen to Rob Bourne. He's a sharp brother. We got some differences. But he is a sharp brother. Yeah, he got some. He, and he and I have differences too, but he is a sharp right. brother. And what you said is kind of similar to what he said. He says the Bible continues the same story as all African African. There is an at life after death. But he says, say. He says, say since the beginning of the Africans recording and burial, re recording and burial grounds, we can see they believed in the literal afterlife. Two, two, 200,000 years ago, we don't have writings of burials that convey their message. So we don't have the writings that convey their message. But when they do start writing, then they start basically, you know, talking about what they believe in or what they believe they will go. And so to, to speak on that Kemet, right, they believe in duality. So when you look at duality, they believe in the, the, the good and evil exist on both sides because mayat is to mayat means order and balance and justice. So if there if, if in the afterlife there is order, balance, and justice, that means that there would have to be a type of evil that's on that side just as well. That's why we, the, the, the um uh, hold on. That's why when you when they go uh, when they go to the uh uh Duat. You got to call it on the line, so make it quick. Rap. Go ahead, go ahead. When they go to the Amduat, right, the underworld, they if they are sinners or what you call they tra transgress the uh, the confessions, the native confessions, they are given over to Am uh, uh, Amut, and and he's taking them to the lake of what you call the fire. Amut is female, by the way. Okay, I got I got to call on the line. You know, G consciousness, G con. If you if if I would have let you kept talking, you was getting ready to go all the way back home, but I stopped you. When I said before there was a Bible, before there was this, you was getting ready to say, oh, there's other traditions in there. And we, you was getting ready to go back into Africa. I shouldn't have stopped you, brother. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. Can I, right can wrong, I a, G. Can I read a quote before? Go back a bit. Let me get to the caller, brother. He been online okay. waiting or she been okay. on. I don't okay. know who it is. Okay. Peace and Black Power family, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's up, son? Now this is your boy, Solid K, man. What's the deal, brother? Oh, man, Solid K, what's happening, my brother? Oh, uh, man, chillin', man. Hey, I want to say what's up to Brother Jabari. You know Jabari already do his thing, man. And the brother, what's his name, G-Con? Yes. Man, all right, the brother G-Con, man, he, man, he articulated everything very good in the beginning of the debate. No, this, this, is, started, not a, this is not a debate. It's a, you a know, discussion. A in, the beginning, right. in the beginning of the discussion, he was doing his thing. Right. But when he started feeling like his back was against the wall, he started, <laughs> he started, you know what I'm saying? Right. Turning it to homosexuality and uh, penis envy. So I just want you know, to stick Hebrews him to the- You always do that. You know that. So I want to get him on this, man. I'm going to just do a little quick drive by today, man. Uh, I want to ask him about Ezekiel 23 and 20 when Israel, she lust, uh, God was jealous and it, it drove him to anger that, that she lusted after, she lusted after thy neighbor, uh, with issues like donkeys and, and emissions like horses. Mm. And before you go and say <laughs> that it was, uh, talking about, before you go and say you're talking about idols, I'm gonna take it back to Ezekiel 16 and 26 when it said you prostituted yourself with thy neighbor, the Egyptians, great of flesh. Flesh being something that comes from a human being, flesh. So you know what he means when he say 
flesh. Big old, uh, I'm going to leave it at that, bro. And uh, I'm going to hang up, and I'm going to let Jabari get you on that. All right, Hold thank on. you, Can I answer that? Can I answer that? Hey, go ahead and answer nah. Go ahead and answer it, G-Con. Right. Did he try to do that? How you going to let him answer my text? All right, so cool. So he's correct. The Bible says that Israel was actually, they did worse than the nations who surrounded them. So the, the Israel, they, it calls them the children of Sodom. So Hold they, up. Were, Hold yeah. up, G-Con. Did you hear what you just said? Yeah. How can Jabari answer your text? But you over here trying to explain the comedic text, Jabari's text that he's been studying for countless studying. years, brother? No, studying. no. Yeah. Have you ever went on a fact-finding mission to Kimmy? Yeah. Have I, you ever been there? How many times you been there? I studied up on the team Osiris a little bit. Nah, see, no. It's <laughs> a difference when you go on eyewitnesses account where you can see it for yourself, not getting first, I mean, not getting third-hand information. Yeah, you're right. But when you can see it for yourself, that's what I'm saying. So go ahead, brother. I'm gonna let you and go ahead and finish. Know, finish up. And you should know, I still study the Bible. Just because I'm a cam, I don't mean I don't study well, the Bible. Right. I, I, I just got my master's degree in divinity last year. So let me, let, okay, so let, I'll take that back out for my apologies. But I, yeah. will say, I will say this. Okay, in this text, I'm not denying it, it doesn't say what it says. It actually says that Israel was doing a lot of whoredoms and committing a lot of sodomy. And even says in Kings, they allowed people to be in the land that was sodomized. They, was, uh, they, they started sodomizing. So they, they've been dealing with a lot of that stuff. So I'll be the first to tell you that, but that the Bible clearly states that God or their power was not with that at all concerning them and other men that was doing those things too. Can I, can I read a quote real quick, Son Go ahead. I just want you to know that this is something that I think that virtually everyone who is still beholden to Christianity. This is something that they should all read. It's, it's, a, it's a text that I think um, is profound in its honesty. And it's called The Religious Instructions of the Negroes in the United States by Charles Colcock Jones. Um, this is a quote. This is him describing why Negroes, enslaved awesome. Africans by the way, should be taught Christianity. He says, it is a matter of astonishment that there should be any objection at all for the duty of giving religious instruction to our, Negro, our Negroes and the benefits flowing from it should be obvious to all. The benefits we concede to be incalculably great and one of them is there will be greater subordination amongst the Negroes. That's on page 52. Something for you to think about brother G-Con. When you practice this tradition, it was given by your enslavers to better subjugate you as an enslaved person. Peace and Black Power family. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, my name is Will, man. I'm calling from North Carolina. What's going on, Will? Hey, nah, man. I just want to call in. I just want to talk to um, G Con and Jabari. First question is for G Con: Why, why is he not a Hebrew? Why, why are you not an Israelite? What about the Bible? Don't, don't turn you into Israelites. Uh, cause I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, West African, man. My people's West Africans, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I subscribe to, I, I'm, 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 I'm at liberty to subscribe to, uh, the Israelite, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, theology, you know, or the, even, even if I want to subscribe to African spirituality. So, but I choose to subscribe to that, but I can, I can do so, but I'm not an Israelite. He's asking you why he's not asking you, oh, oh, he says, you're why? free to do it. Oh, he says, why? Oh, yeah, of oh, course okay. you're free uh, to do it. Well, I'm sorry. I don't subscribe to that because um, uh, I, I I did a study on some some of the stuff. And when I did a study, uh, it just didn't fit me. Like I don't have any markers that come out of those areas, you know. Uh, and I'm 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 more so related to West Africans uh, biologically than anything. I don't have any type of markers or mutations that come out of those areas. Come out of what areas? Okay, okay, okay. You got our markers and mutations like and mutations. Okay, okay, you, you got on markers and mutations. I guess you get that from the uh, what DNA ancestry. Yeah, basically, yeah. And any, I, yeah. Okay, what about the uh, what about the prophecies of the Bible? Do they pertain? Do they act any in any way pertain to your people? Uh, yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of uh, biblical texts that pertain to, you know, uh, African Americans. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
it, you know, it's a lot of it's the, the text to, to, that pertain to a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay, all right, that's fine. That's fine. Thanks a lot. And um, my next question is for Jabari. Um, Jabari, uh, what you did, all the countries, 54 countries in Africa, um, why exactly the Kemet is the one that you chose? Well, I, to follow I wanna, with it. Tell me tradition. I want to I want to be clear about one thing. I'm a West African too. I'm an African. You know, the, the clothes I'm wearing are from West Africa. I mean, I, I so I don't have. I'm not like I'm a Kemet. My spiritual tradition comes from Kemet. I'm an African. Okay. And I think that what you're gonna note is you can look at and I wish I had more time to do this. I don't. But you can look at African traditions and there are great similarities. I have actually connected myself to the African nation that has been the most influential, the most powerful, and has influenced not just Africa, but the entire world. And so that's why I've connected myself to Kemet spiritually, because in actuality, there are many similarities in African spirituality with Kemetic spirituality, other African spiritual forms and Kemetic spirituality, because ancient Kemet is the nation that gives civilization to the world. All right, thank you, brother. Okay. Appreciate that. Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother. All right. Hey, um, yes, thank you. Hey, brother, um, G Khan. Yes, sir. You said that Christ was an Israelite. Yes, sir. Shouldn't you be following in the footsteps of Christ? Uh, I am. I follow the steps of His words. Oh, so you're not trying to be like Him, or you trying? You're not trying to. You know, be like the I, I don't necessarily I don't necessarily have to be an Israelite to follow in the steps of the words of Christ. Um, isn't it true, brother, that in order for you to teach the Bible? Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Isn't it true in order for you to even teach the Bible, G Con, that you must be an Israelite? Uh not at all, actually, because once a person becomes a believer according to the text. He anoints them with the spirit of God, which is the teacher who should teach you all things. So it's actually the teacher that teaches you all things. Now, does the word of God come by an Israelite? Yes, it does. But once, uh, uh, once a, a Gentile get it, his he can take that word, world, that word into the world and be anointed with the spirit. What is a Gentile? A Gentile is a non-Israelite, basically, or what they call oh. it. Oh, a Gentile is not European. Not the white man. No, yeah. is everybody else the same. Not Israelite. Everybody, it, it, it became really a term concerning the heathen nations, but really non Israelites, basically. And you were think, what is the, um, marring the entire world with one word? Well, hold on, Jabari. Hold on, Jabari. What is an um, a Edomite? What is an Edomite? The Edomite is the son of Abraham, which is a, which is a, mainly your Arabs that you see, or Jordanians that you see today. Um, the Edomites are not the white man. No, they're not the white man at all. I was told yesterday through my interrogation, uh, Yara, that was on, where the people are saying he done beat me up and all of this. Evidently, when I asked them about the um, the Edomites, and I asked him, who are these people? He said the Edomites was the Chinese, the Japanese, the Mexicans, and the Jews, the so-called Jews that we see today with, the, with their little small hats. So. He said that those were all his brothers, bro. This is what he said yesterday. The first time I ever heard this, bro. Now it came, it came in like they got, they got what you call the I do me. I mean, uh, the, uh, what is it? The, uh, uh, they got Edom. They got Edom. And Kim, you can look at some of the glyphs that would eat them. They more the people that's in the wilderness or Asiatics and we see this in the wilderness. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, not Nebuchadnezzar, but Nebuchadnezzar fought against Tima which was Edomites, and so these are Arabians, actually. So, G. Khan, if the Bible posed to be the word of God, and you, this ship, you're a smart brother. You got to see this, bro. If the Bible posed to be the word of God, why is it that you can't get two people out of the world to agree with the same story? Like, you got a different story. I mean, if I was to ask 100 people, you would find 100 different answers on who's the Edomite, who was Jesus, with, was he married? Did God, did Jesus had a wife? You'll find all of this stuff to be, everything will be twisted, bro. Why do you think that is? Because people are free. They can uh, they can do that, which is, uh, they have the power to do otherwise or think differently or interpret things differently. And so when you look at any any literature, 
any literature that you look at, it's the same way with any literature. We can read something in this book that we read today, and man, Javar can interpret it differently, just like in uh, Kemet. We just get different understandings, or some people just be way off or whatever. All right, peace and black power family. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, you saw this is Apostle, man. Oh, shit, man. Here we go. We got the Apostle, the elder up in the building. What's up, Apostle? Hey, um, I'm going to holler at G-Con for a minute. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Let's go. Grace and peace. All right. Um, Before you do that, can I ask you one quick question? Yeah, go ahead. Are the Hebrews, are the Israelites the only one that posed to teach the Bible? For sure. Thank you. The world, the, the, the world, the rest of the world is to receive the word of God from Israel. Okay. That's the only All way right. they can You can, can ask your question, brother. All right. Um, you said that you, you, you cater to uh, more of a Western African uh, uh, historical for yourself, but most Israelites today claim the same thing. Like myself, my ancestry comes from B'nai Togo, as well as from uh, uh, Syrian. Uh, my mother's uh, DNA is directly linked into Sierra Leone. Uh, my father's DNA is directly into uh, B'nai Togo and Portugal, uh, around the Negro land area. So I don't understand how you can say that because you are more inclined to accept your heritage coming from West Africa, you, you're not Israel because that's where we were in West Africa. Or do you not know that? Uh, I think that the Jews were numerous. Uh, according to certain, uh, certain books, they was numerous and also they was wealthy in uh, North Africa, and also they moved to West Africa. But I think that mainly the uh, the, uh, the Jews, it was black Jews, it was converts, are the ones basically who were slave masters who took uh, uh, West Africans into slavery. And- uh, Yeah, well- uh, Hey, hey yeah. um, Apostle, I gotta say this yeah. and I gotta do this here, man. I'm sorry, please forgive me, but um, I just gotta speak the truth and I know you're gonna speak the truth. According to your heritage, you would not be an Israelite either, am I correct? No. Um, are you 60% no. European? Yes. That's what the DNA said. Okay. Um, what is your father? I told you my father's my father heritage is Portuguese and African. So your father is a Portuguese. His heritage is Portuguese. Okay. He comes from a Portuguese background. And an African background. So with the Portuguese that you, because I know y'all want to play these games, like, oh, no, he's a dark Portuguese, or he's a black Portuguese. Was the Portuguese of European descent? Would you say European? You know what I'm European. saying, brother. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're saying. All right. But you understand, you understand, Europe, Europe, even... Answer my question, my brother. I'm answering your question. I'm answering your question, brother. Even the word Europe came from a black queen. We ain't asking Europa. you none of that, bro. No, saying. what I'm saying is, <laughs> yo, be, brother, slow down. Crazy, bro. What I'm trying to tell I'm you asking you, let me ask you the question Europe, again. Let me ask you a question be, again. I don't want you to give me the yeah. history on Europe. I just want a yes or no answer from you. Uh, uh, is brother, your father from the European background? Like, you know, the Portuguese. My father has European in him. My father's mother was a European was a white woman. And what about your grandfather? My grandfather was a black man. Okay. Just like my father, just okay. like me, Okay. just All like right. my son. All right, don't, don't get rattled, brother. I mean, you got no, to no. answer these see, questions, brother. Yeah, I don't mind answering the questions, but what I, like when I was on Garfield's show- 60 something percent, um, yeah, you get, yeah, because see, yeah, no, no, see, understand, my mother, my mother had about 25% European in her. My mother has white people in her family living today. Yo, no wonder, have, no wonder you hate Africa, brother. No, <laughs> you no, got 60% no, no, European in listen, you, bro. 
Listen, that shit listen. is taking over, man. Most, what is going most, on? Listen to me. Listen to me. My own siblings, because we don't share the same father. My own siblings are carrying about 30% European. And we don't share the same father. That's just from my mother. Okay? So I'm, I'm carrying about 30%, 30% from my father, and I'm carrying about 30% from my mother. Can I ask a question? Because I'm only, I'm 50% of my father, and I'm 50% of my mother. Okay. Can I ask now, my uh, rest of my siblings, I got eight siblings. And I'm in the middle. I got four, five siblings older than me. I got three siblings under me. Can I ask him a question, son? Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Champ, want to ask you a question. Uh, brother, brother. Yeah, go ahead. Good, good to hear you, brother. I, I, I wanted to ask, there's something I don't understand, right? My understanding, and I want to know if this is your understanding as well is that in it, in the house of Israel, it is determined that you are the nation of your father. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Can I ask you, when did Israel, if you, according to your understanding, when did they go into West Africa? After AD 70. Oh, okay. That yours is a little bit later. There's two, usually, usually there's they, two, they, they there's have two like, excursions. Okay. There's two okay. excursions. Usually they- There's a Portuguese- it, Oh, wait, listen. They usually say that it happens after the fall of the Second Temple at 70 CE, right? So you are so saying, did. To, me, yeah. True. So you are True. saying to me that you are the nation of your father and Israel went into West Africa in 70 CE. The European didn't come get you for another 1500 years. I guess you didn't have sex with any African women when you were there or any African men when you were there. Mm. Because then you wouldn't be no, Israel well, anymore. Let, let me let me explain this to you. Because see, when you we came into hard, Africa, brother. Just, listen to me. Listen, listen. Now, and it's not just that time because you see an explosion of black Hebrew Jews uh, during the expulsion because of Queen Fernandez and uh, King John the Second when they expelled the black Hebrews from Portugal and Spain uh, around 1492 into the 1500s. That was, a, uh, I mean, a heavy explosion from the Jews that were in Spain and the Jews that brother, were in Portugal brother, brother, that brother. were taken. Listen to me before you interrupt me. Hear me out. So that's just quick, one. And you know then I'm making seven. it quick. Yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to make it quick. There, there was, after the Second Temple, a lot of black Hebrews that went into, just to avoid that whole thing, went into Africa. But mainly after 70 AD, a lot went in. And then a lot came in after 14, because okay, okay. we were there, the Portuguese knew we were there, and the Portuguese, Portuguese brought us there. Let's make that a, was let's, the first. I, I, I mean, that's it, brother, I don't, that's it. Wait, I'm I don't give want you to miss the point, though. Even if you say it yeah. happened in, in the 14th century, CE, even if that's what you were saying, which I disagree with, but even if you were saying that, the first time that an Israelite woman has intercourse with an African man, they're no longer Israel She's according to your definition. Right. And right. so you are telling me right. that if most African, most um, black Hebrews got into West Africa in 70 AD, and you didn't come up out of there until 1500 years later, there was never an African man in your lineage? Good point, Jabari. Yeah. Do you understand Matt, what he's saying? No sense, brother. Yes, I understand. Let me answer him. Let me answer him. Let me answer him. The African American has been in America for 400 years oh. to this day, right? Brother, we are not asking you no, nothing, I'm brother. Asking. Just no, deal with no, the, see, that's I'm why answering the long. same question. Damn, I'm answering man. the same question. I'm proposing the same thing right back at him. We've been here in America for 400 years. Yes, the white man have mixed in with, that's why so many African Americans today has white European blood. You're not talking but for about the most part. About listen to me, for the most part, we as African Americans, we have mingled with ourselves, not to say that no European. Brother, you're ever, not answering the question. That's, that's totally different. 
That's I'm different. asking the question. No, Jabari. No, it's not. No, no, stop, it's stop, stop. Jabari, bring it up again. Ask the question clear, uh, clearer for him. And here's the deal. I could have said that in three sentences, but I wanted him to agree so you could see the fallacy of the right. thing. Say Most it again. of the Hebrews say that when Judah fell, when the, when the second temple fell in 70 CE, that is when most of the Jews went into West Africa. That's right. what they say. Right. And they also right. say that you are the nation that your father is. You right. cannot tell me that you were on in West Africa for nearly 1,500 years before the European took you out of there, and there are not native African men that were already there in your lineage. Do because you get it? Are, Do you understand? If they are, you are not Israel. You understand Those that? individuals, I understand what he's saying. But see, what you're saying Is he right? Is, is he right? No. No, Damn. there there were some mingling. There were some other African mm. nations that had relationships with Hebrew women, but not to the point that you can just excurry <laughs> the, the Hebrew race. You and just changing you, your no, own definition. No, 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 your own no definition. just like just like our men. Brother, you said like you Hebrew are your men. father's nation. You said right. that. We I, we I asked you, and you said yes. So if there are African yeah. men that had intercourse with the Israelite women, that I don't even believe that happened. But this is your narrative. It falls apart Listen, brother, immediately. All right, so you're saying the Israelite men had intercourse with who, Jabari? I, what I'm saying to you is, is that you cannot tell me that in 1,500 years that those children of Israel did not have sex with native African men. And once they did that, they were no longer Israel. Now I'm saying, mm. I don't even believe that that happened, but that's according to your definition. Mm. It does not make sense. If you just ease the narrative a little bit, if you just pull the little thread, the whole garment, it doesn't even listen, fall the thread. It disappears like dust. Listen, listen, you're not listening. No, we are listening, brother. We no, listen you're not. You do what y'all always do is try to change this narrative when, no, you, when you get caught I'm out there in the line. Listen, listen, you want to make a point one way, but you don't want that same point to go the other way. What's you want to say all our women, you want to say all our women have sex with African men. Therefore, we can't be Hebrews no more. But you're not acknowledging the fact that Hebrew men have sex with African women. And it countered it. Every but time we had sex, brother, brother, every brother. time we had sex wait, with African wait, women, wait. we produced ourselves. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. This is what the hell are you talking thinking. about? Wait, listen, this is magical thinking. You have to stop. We're talking about 1,500 years. We're not talking about one generation. We're probably talking at least 15. No. 150, let's say 75 generations. You cannot tell me that there was one Hebrew woman, one Hebrew woman that came in there in 70 CE that never had in her line, anywhere in her line, an African man in 75 generations, in, mm. in 1,500 years. Your definition is either you. Once you tease it a little bit, it falls apart. It happened both ways. Brother. We talking about happened, this one way right here. Is listen, he right no in way. this way? Another, another. Even if it did happen That's one way. way. So, listen, even if it happened both ways, we're talking about, okay, so let's say that there was a Hebrew um, man that had sex with an African woman. So you're saying that African child is now an Israelite. But you're saying that they always did that for 75 generations? We're not talking about one generation. We're talking about 75 generations. You cannot find... Let me ask you a question. You cannot find... You cannot find... See, the, this is the problem. Hold on. This is the problem that I have with these brothers, man. When you when you pull something up and you showing it to them according to their own knowledge, according to what they saying, and then you bring it up and show them where their error is at, they can't say 
damn, you know what? You right, brother. Let me go they, and look this up. They're making you it still like gotta keep the lie going. So that then would you work end up sounding was, stupid. So Netta, it would work if it was one. It would work if there was one generation. We're talking about at least seventy-five generations. You, you understand what he's saying, G consciousness? Yeah, I understand what he's saying. That's why I said I'm not an Israelite because I said, mm, "Go ahead, man. Come on." Right. It. It does not have work. To be. Listen, Jabari. Listen, based on your analogy, since we have been brought here through the slave trade, because we know Europeans knock down the African women, since we know that European men knock down African women. I want you to stop for a minute, Apostle, because you're getting ready to make yourself sound like a damn fool. <laughs> we talking about 15 goddamn 100 years, brother. You talking about 400 years. It wasn't like Europeans was, was raping our women for 400 but, years straight. But wait, we was but intermixing wait. with them. They were, of course, they would come in and have sex with some of them. But wait, but you, so that's a whole different story, brother. So now, I don't even agree with his, his, um, his rules. I don't agree that you are the nation of your father. That's another way to devalue women. I'm right. saying according to your internal logic, right. it doesn't make sense. So even if you're going to say it goes both ways, they were European men, so that means you're European. That's just your misogynist junk. I don't agree with that. That's not my. That's not my misogynist junk. When I open up the Bible, oh. and I look at <laughs> generations, no. When I open up the Bible, the book I believe in. And I see that this man begot this man. This man begot this man. This man begot this man. For 42 and 42 and 42 generations, that tells me that they are identified by their fathers, not by their mothers. Yes, but you read it. That is your narrative. I do not subscribe That's to it. My, I'm saying according to your according that to your is narrative. My narrative. Yes, but and brother, my narrative brother. still is the He's not hearing. He's not hearing. If that is your, that, I don't agree with that. But if you agree with it, then you saying that you're an Israelite falls apart. You're not hearing it. I'm not agreeing that you are the nation of your father. You're trying to put it on me. That's your stuff that you the, the enslaver stuck in your African head and got you acting against your own interest in 2020. It's painful to me. This is this. I, I get emotional about it. When are we gonna come off of this stuff? Well, I disagree with that approach, though, because I, I do think that uh, inheritance uh, through the father is very important. See, it's really about inheritance. But that's a European con, a European pro, uh, pro paradigm. I don't think I don't think that is because a man is able to protect his inheritance, and so one of the reasons why I think the the black nation or black communities is failing today is because. When the when the when the uh, when they when this white supremacists came in, the first thing they did was took took the black man up out of the household of, of women, and, and and so this is how they conquer. So you got to understand the art of war, and black people is the only people that is in this day that expect are uh, waiting on a woman when the woman is waiting on the black man to really stand up and stop being effeminate to the point to where they're not standing up. Most of our men are becoming very effeminate to the point to where. They're not looked at as uh, protectors, but more so taken from the black woman uh, because of they separated the the the, uh, the the black man out of the household. Now the cycle has continued to where the black man doesn't want to stay in the house and take care of his kids. Brother, I mean, brother, most most men, most black men are not effeminate. I mean, I don't even know why y'all say stuff saying, like that. Hold on, hold on, brother. I'm not. That's saying, what you said. No, hold on, no, no. I'm not saying most men. I didn't that is. You said most black men are becoming effeminate. Well, That's a direct quote. Hold on. Well, let me take that back. What I'm saying is this is the majority of men are having to lean on their mothers to raise them. And and I'm not, there's nothing wrong with a, a, a parent that is doing the best they can do as a woman to raise her children. But really, the male should be structured in that household just as well. And so I, when you look at, when you look at the oppressors, they understand that. And so then when you got a black man in the 20th century that don't understand the art of war, don't understand and can't look at other nations that went forth to conquer and how they conquered and don't mimic that, then he's failing in society. But brother, but brother, brother, you're not even talking about the topic. We no, both no, agree. No, no, we, no, wait, no, we both agree that black men should defend their homes. Okay, and, and with that, yo, 
I want, want y'all to close talk. out, brother G Khan. Close out. Let the people know where they can find you. This is volume one, brother Jabari. When you get more time, we're gonna have a bet now. Being that both of y'all got to know each other, now we're gonna come up with some topics on which y'all can debate. So now that y'all had a good feeling around, we're gonna come up with some of the topics that y'all two can have a debate and it's gonna be um, respectful. Nobody can talk while the other person is talking. You know how we do it, G-Con. All right, so um, you can go ahead and close out, G-Con. We respect you. Thank you for coming through, brother. I got mad love. I got mad. And um, it's on you. Go ahead, brother. First of all, I want to give all praise to the Most High God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Um, man, I appreciate you, uh, Brother Jabari, for coming through, man, taking the time out to come through on a Friday. Peace and blessings to your family. Most High bless you. As well as Sinead, appreciate you providing the platform. I've learned a whole lot over the years. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with this platform and, uh, you know, even, you know, spiritual concepts. Uh, appreciate the brothers like you have coming in here dealing with finances. I've raised my business up to a certain level, dealing with finances, dealing with some of the brothers you had coming through here, as well as, you know, uh, diet, eating and certain things like that. I appreciate you, brothers, and uh, Thank what you, you guys man. doing out there. And uh, that's why I, I try to come here and try to support the, the I don't just watch. I try to come here and try to right. support. Well, I've been seeing you, brother. I want to thank you for all the donations through the years you've been hitting me with. So I've been checking you. I've seen you. And right, thank they you, taught brother. me that. They taught me that in church to, to 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 basically, you know, you just you don't come to just sit in the pews. You supposed to give and, and, and do what you got to do. So right. I definitely appreciate that and uh, appreciate the dialogue tonight. Uh, grace and peace to you, brothers, and uh, best bless to your households. All right, Jabari, you got um, three minutes. Close let me out let two. me let me just simply say that oh, two minutes. I learned that in the black church too. I hope you think that because I am critiquing the tradition that the enslavers gave us, that I, I'm talking ill of, of those black people in the pews. Those are my family, right? Um, and so I, there were lots of things that I learned from those mothers and fathers that were there that was edifying to me. Um, it's not my tradition anymore, but they're still my family and you're still my family. And I have to say, while this was a really heated conversation in times, it was always respectful. I really enjoyed talking to Brother G Consciousness. And I think that, um, I, honestly, I think he's a solid brother. I mean, everything I've heard about anyone who talks about him says he's a really solid dude. And we should just continue to talk. Brother, we could, we, this don't always be, have to be on TV, on, on, on Sunday TV. We could just go get a meal and, and chop it up. Because um, I, I think that while there's some things that we don't agree on, that I'm sure that there'll be much, much more that we will agree on. And the stuff that we don't agree on, we'll talk and try to come to a better understanding of each other. So I wanna say um, thank you for spending, there's a lot of other things you could be doing on a Friday night. I wanna say I thank you for spending the time um, trying to edify this audience just as I have. And it, 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 I think it was a good conversation, it needs to continue. So thank you so much and peace to the Sonnet of TV Studios, Black News 102 family. Wow. You are now inside Sonnetta Studios, the House of Consciousness production, Black News presentation.